We are live, and we got messed up today, big time, trying to get this thing set up today. I don't know why, but my laptop tried to update just as I turned everything on, and then, of course, nothing happened, and I think you probably saw black screen for the, the whole time that that was going on, so I didn't even realize that. So anyway, we are started, we are here, and we are live, so thank you, everybody, for joining us on this Thursday as usual to get us started as we do just about every week going to let you guys know that not only can you find us here live every week on YouTube but you can also catch the audio only version of the podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts simply search Bearded Drums I don't know why my marketing card and uh, all that stuff is not getting pulled up today, which is fine, but I guess I'll have to, for some reason, whatever this Streamlabs update did, basically wiped everything away. Oh, no. I have no idea why. I managed to get the main camera set up. I think we've got, yeah, your camera's working. Um, but for some reason, I can't pull up uh, all my little thingies today, so I guess we'll have to forego the outro video. And I'll have to fix that because I think it was just black screen the whole time for like two minutes. Goodness. (laughs) I'm going to check and make sure that we are actually live. Yeah, we're live and we got people watching. So obviously that is working correctly. So a little rocky start, but we are here. Let me check one more thing to make sure. Okay. Okay. Everything's running, so we look good. I'll just have to fix a bunch of stuff when we get done today. <laughs> we'll fix it in post. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> luckily I can take stuff out when we mess up, but I can't put the intro video yeah. back in, so I'll have to figure that out. But whatever. Anyway, glad to see all of you that are here for another Thursday edition of Bearded, Bearded Drums, Drums Live. Live. A little rockier today, but we are here. How is your week going so far? Uh, pretty good. Um, snare drum came in, got some heads hot. I'm some, not looking at it. Yeah, got some heads look. ordered. Got some heads ordered <laughs> last night. Um, while I was at work on my first break, it's been pretty good. Our system went down past two nights. That's been Ooh. an ordeal. Yeah, the, uh, we're like the guinea pig for everything. So Lake Charles doesn't have to do it. Uh, Atlantic City doesn't have to do it. They give it to us because we're the smaller one of all of them. And so we have to do all this like troubleshooting first. And then once we get it all figured out, then everyone else does it. <clears throat> well, that does not sound fun at all. No, it's not. Sounds Lots of very me, upset old people, yeah. All furious. Absolutely furious. Going, why can't I get my free play? Where's my comps? I was supposed to come eat tonight. Well, ma'am, first of all, it's 12 o'clock at night. No one's open. <laughs> it's like, second of all. <laughs> It's like, do you not bring money with you? It's like, you can also leave property to go someplace else and eat. Well, I'm staying here and I want... I was like, I get it. You want the one-stop shop, but uh, we have the placards outside and the little thingamajigs that say... It's been messing me up lately. I guess because everybody's hiring and nobody has enough staff like anywhere. It doesn't matter, like food service, Walmart. Everything closes so early now, like... Taco Bell closes at like 11, maybe 11.30. Checkers closes like at midnight. So like when I am lazy and I don't want to come home and cook, like after a gig or something, there's nothing to eat. No, and then Walmart closes and they don't have 24 hours anymore. So you can't just go like get a pizza or something. That's what I used to do. Yeah. Instead of like wasting nine bucks at Wendy's or whatever, I would go to Walmart and for nine dollars, man, you could come home with a feast. Yeah. Like, but can't do that anymore. Um, the only thing I can do is go all the way up Cowan to the interstate. There's a McDonald's there. So I can kind of feel that lady. Like, lately, did I tell you the story about Taco Bell? Yeah, you told me on Sunday. Dude, that was a that was aggravating. I'm still aggravated about that, and I will not be giving them any of my money ever again. Like, totally mad about boycott Taco Bell. That's my message for the day. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, but it's, it's, um, I don't know if, I don't know if some people just don't feel safe enough to work at this point or whatever, but 
it seems like everywhere I go, everybody's hiring. Like there are signs out. Like not even like the little like we printed it up on the the computer in the back. Like I've noticed places now have like big placards that were like sent from corporate. Like where was I? Ross. Walked into Ross and there's this huge placard by the store talking about we're hiring blah blah blah. Thirteen dollars an hour, whatever it was, yeah, for Ross. And I was like, wow. I mean, like it just seems like. So like I know the Scarlet Pearl has been giving a bunch of bonuses. Uh, our one of my bosses, his daughter works over there. She's gotten two raises good since Lord. they've been open, um, making really good money. And all she is is a break room cook. Literally, she wow. just sits back there and just like, oh, you want a burger and a fries? Cool. Boom, boom, boom. Slings it, and she's making like almost as much as I am on like a good week of tokes. I think she's at like 17 an hour or something like that. Dang. Yeah. Cause just to keep people like, yeah, no one. Wants well, to and like I said, you know, if you do need a job at this point, it seems like everywhere in the country they're hiring. Yeah. So it's not going to be hard for anybody when they do get, you know, feel comfortable enough with, uh, with playing or playing again, <laughs> like they're gigging again Yeah, <laughs> with working again. They, it will probably not be very hard to find a job. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm very thankful that I'm working again steadily. And actually, Mike Malone, those pictures that he sent in, um, he put in the email that he wasn't going to be here tonight because he has woo-hoo, a gig. A yeah. gig. I saw Holy, that. Ho- I mean, wow. He's and he, I think he even said that in the email, like, who'd have thought those existed yeah. anymore? <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, I, um, even though everything is nice and steady again, I'm off this weekend, the whole weekend, just because like way back, Matt had booked a couple of duo things. Yeah. So it's just it's just a weekend off. So I'm actually excited about it because we're gonna go hiking on Saturday uh, to the Grand Canyon of Mississippi, Red Cliff, Red Bluff. Oh, <laughs> same thing. <laughs> Whatever that means, the Grand. The, I mean, that can't be like the Grand Canyon of Mississippi. That's probably. <laughs> it's cool though. Uh, from the pictures, the I've pictures seen. look great. The video is great, but uh, um. It just shows you how, how loose they have to be with that terminology, because even for us to have a hill in this state, much less a mountain or a hole, much less a canyon. We got some hills of, of Hattiesburg going into it. It is up and down. True. Very true. Um, so it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Um, have the weekend off. I've been working my butt off all week practicing, and I'll continue to do so tomorrow. And then we'll go Saturday, and that ought to be uh, the weather should be nice. It should be fun, and so it'll be it'll be nice to have a weekend off, even though I've had plenty of time off. But like <laughs> now that we're working again, to have yeah. a nice weekend off, get out, get hiking, get outside. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Hopefully, all this bad weather uh, will be done because I know we got rain on the way. Yeah, but everything I've seen said we should be good by Saturday. So that's kind of what my week is looking like. Your week though is looking a little more fruitful than mine. Yeah, it's shiny and new. And new. And you've ordered how well, do you want to say on air? Yeah. How much it cost you to order yeah. all those heads? Two hundred and eighty nine dollars <laughs> for all those heads. Jeez. That is and that's for and I'll tell you exactly what I got. I got two twelve inch We'll start. Okay, we'll, we'll go Remo first. There we'll you work go. our way down. We'll, okay, so Remo, I got two 12 inch clear black dot heads. I got a 14 inch clear black dot and a 16 inch clear black dot. And that's all I got for Remo. And then for Evans, here's where it gets funky. I got for batters, I got two 12 inch uh, UV2s, a 14 inch. UV2, a 16 inch UV2. I got a 20 inch uh, calf tone for the bass drum. And then for the Rezos, I got the uh, Rezo 7s. They're coated. Nice. So I got coated Rezo heads, two 12s, a f- uh, and a 16. And so that's all the heads. Oh, sorry, I forgot another. I forgot some more. <laughs> Um, I got the snare tune-up pack for that. Oh, that's right. You told me that. Yeah, and it's uh, I was, I, was I, I told you it was sixty bucks. Um, but that gets you a coated Genera one G one. Um, you get a three hundred hazy, and you get a set of P 
pure sound snare wires. Which snare wires? Do you remember like a t- the typical 16 uh, strand? It, or? It's the 20 strand uh, one. Nice. Yeah, and it's the pro one too. So it's got the 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 sides come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It also gives you the straps. Well, that doesn't use straps. That one uses strings. Yeah. But they should still send me strings and that snare wire packet, I hope at least. Yeah. Those, uh, those are some good wires. That cord they give you, I mean, the, the for the pure sound, they the, should give me the cord and the straps for it. I can't remember when, because I've only, it's weird. As many times as I've ordered snare wires, do you have to denote that when ordering like a specific model because like i ordered a pair of snare wires a long time ago and they came with the strap and the pins and then every pair of snare wires i've ordered since then probably six different sets of wires for all those drums have come with cords not one of them has come with the strap the straps is it's like a different thing now it's like you have to because used to that was the standard and then they done away with it and then now it's just well, that's annoying. The cord because I don't even know. I can't even remember. I don't, I might not even have the drum that has the straps on it. I can't remember to be honest with you now. Um, so every and I've noticed everything I've got lately has had cords on it, and I I've been trying to make up my mind lately whether I like straps or cords. I think we've gotten used to cords because we have to put it on so many drums that True, it, it doesn't the, matter uh, to us anymore because we used to have a bunch of uh, straps and now like everything comes with cord. For those yeah. pure sounds, I guess we just kind of like, oh, I guess it's cord time now, baby. I mean, I, I can do either. I, I did order a pack of straps the other day, just the plastic Gibraltar, and I just can't make up my mind whether I like either. And like you said, I think it's because we have such a mix of vintage and new. It's like, ah, whatever, I don't really care. Yeah, you know? at this point, I'll just take cord all day. I mean, as weird as it sounds, it's like straps are cool, but I'm just I'm used to putting cord on. <laughs> and I, I, I just really don't want to break it because like, I know that I have all this excess cord I can just use. <laughs> yeah, I have shortened every uh, blind in my house because <laughs> those are better. Those are even better than the cords that the snare wires or the snare company send you. Um, that cord that's on like older blinds, man, I have taken and just I've got spool of it in the back for when stuff breaks. Um, but yeah, it's kind of aggravate me. Like only one time did I get the straps every time then since, you know, it's been cords. Yeah. Um, but at least you got a bunch of stuff to work with. Uh, you're going to put what on what the Evans is going on. I, that's the thing. I'm going to figure out what sounds better on the swindle kit. And yeah. Then first. Whatever at first. And, and then, then whatever doesn't work, will go on the Gretsch. Yeah, yeah. So the Gretsch will get the coated bottoms regardless. Yeah. But it's whether it'll have the center dots or the UV twos. Yeah, um, I think you're gonna have luck. You know, um, I think you can make that uh, swindle sound pretty fat, and then whatever else can kind of go to the Gretsch from there. But you've got where did it come from, Sweetwater? Yeah. So you've of got course. it all in order. Yeah, um, they're good about shipping. Tim called me today. Yeah. Um, so I forgot to order sticks in my thing. I was like, oh, I'll just wait. Because <laughs> I went on because I was digging through when I was placing my order and i was like i like those erskine sticks but i wish they had a bigger bead those piccolo sticks and so i'm like well i don't know so i went through and looked at like promark and see if they had anything and that diameter the 0.525 and they don't give you diameters for promark they only give you 5a 5ab 5b and all those i'm like that's dumb because vader gives you Vader's website's dope. You can pick how long you want the stick, and no, then like, like, like and a like stick builder, and it'll yeah, and like and what's the range you want, and then it sh- and it pulls all the sticks that fit inside those parameters you set. Yeah. So if you want a stick that's like between like like point four seven five, and then like like the biggest being like point five two five, you put that in there. I don't want my stick no longer than seventeen inches. You yeah. dial it down. You put it to seventeen. You say you don't mind having like it being hickory and maple. You click all those boxes, and then it's like, here's three different models we have that are inside this criteria, or however many, you know, how specific you get. You can get down to just like one pair of sticks. Like, yeah. well, this is exactly what you're looking for, or close to it. Well, you hear um, that, Promark? You need to seriously step that web game up. Same to uh, Vic Firth. They don't have that either. Uh, it's like some it, companies just have, number one, I'm not saying this is like a defense of them. And it probably has nothing to do with what you're specifically talking about. Some companies' websites just suck. Yeah. Like, that's one thing. I, I love Sweetwater. They are great on pricing. They're great on financing. They are great on, like, customer service when they call you. That app is terrible. 
It is so glitchy. And Guitar Center, even worse. Like, probably the worst web portal is Guitar Center. I don't um, like it. It makes no sense. You know, and I know it's expensive to do all that kind of stuff and, you know, have, like, assets built into the website where you can build a kit or, like, st- you know, whatever. Yeah. So I know it's tough, but, yeah, some companies just, their website sucks. Yeah. Um, I did, it's funny that you mentioned that because I got bored Tuesday night, I think it was. I got home from Rachel's and... We've done it a bunch of times, you and I, and I wanted to do it one last time because I'm tired of digging through that drawer full of drumsticks. Yeah. I took every stick out and paired them up. Like, and obviously just like the, the, the crap, I just pushed to the side immediately. Yeah. And I took every, like, sticks that were in that little dr- uh, drawer down there. There were some sticks over on that shelf and everything that was in that drawer. It's like a huge... Chester drawers that was just full of like sticks I had. Yeah, because the last time we went through it, we were only looking for seven A's. We didn't look any at any of the yeah. other sticks. Well, I pulled every stick out, put the crap to the side, and pulled like even like marching sticks, like everything I could, hard mallets, soft mallets, um, and I put it all in a. I did it. I was like, I don't want to ever do this again. So I pulled no matter what the brand, Vic Firth, Vader, Promark. I pulled every good stick that was left, paired them up, and put them in a stick bag down there so that I can just, I don't ever have to go back to that drawer again and try to dig through <laughs> sticks. The stick graveyard. Yeah. I was actually hoping for some, I was to, it, what spurred it was I was looking for some Vic Firth SD1s. Uh, I remember a long time ago, Pat was a really big fan. There may Bolero, still those be. Those Boleros? No, just the regular SD1. Not the super fine ball tip one, but just the SD1 general. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, Pat was a big fan of them years ago, and I was, and I just was thinking, like, in, in passing, I was like, I do, I like the feel of that stick. It was a it was a rock maple, so it was a little bit lighter. And I was like, maybe I have some. So that's kind of what spurred it on. I didn't find a single pair. <laughs> But at least I did go through, and now every stick that is usable, that is of extra stuff, is yeah. now sorted. It took me forever, but it's done. And I never have to go back into that dumb drawer again. It's just full of <laughs> just random drumsticks. <laughs> um, the weird things that I do in the late hours of my week. <laughs> it's that being one of them. Um, forgetting to upload the audio version of this show to whatever it's called, Red Circle. Yeah. did Had to do that this week and catch up on like four episodes. <laughs> but if I can remember, not remember, but if I can get to my late at night thing, I can usually clean up things that I totally forget to do while I'm trying to practice and do all the other things. Um, so I don't know what the point of all that was. I think because just you were talking about ordering sticks, yeah. um, which I want to do. Um, there's several new sticks I want to try. Not that they're new. They're just new to me. The Anika... Niles, 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 whatever, yeah. their pro mark. And somebody else, now that I, now I just can't even think of who it was, somebody else had a pro mark that I wanted to try. Because I really like the Bob Gatsons that I got a hold of. Yeah, I want to I wanna get a pair of those for myself yeah. and give them run through the ringer. I want to get a set of um, Benny Greb sticks. Yeah. and Those and are great. The tip, granted, I was probably not very smart using them on a pop gig. I tore the tips up really quickly. They are a great stick, though. Yeah. If you use them properly, you'll get a better result than me trying to, like, play in a huge club with, you know, some rock tune where I'm hitting way too hard with what's a pretty tiny tip. Yeah. Um, but they were. I remember they were a great stick, and like I said, I want to try. That might have been the stick. I might just have been thinking I wanted some more because I tore all mine up. And then the Anika Neals. And then uh, if I can – if they'll come on Prime – or look like they're actually in stock somewhere. When I have to pay shipping, I'll get some more of those Bob Gatsons. Because right now, I think on uh, Amazon, it's like whatever they are plus a little bit of shipping. Yeah, they're not prime. They're not in like uh, in good stock somewhere where I can get a deal on them. Um, but I like those. And I want to get some more. So um, I'm kind of starting to go through sticks again. I'm probably gonna have to order. I probably just need to place an, a Sweetwater order and get all the heads I need. And like a bunch of sticks, so I don't have to worry about it for a while. Yeah, what did, what sticks do you guys like using? Because like I'm in like a funk for sticks. I've been using the Peter Erskine Piccolos for a while, and before that, I only used the Steve Jordans for God, I don't know how long, years. The only sticks I ever used, rock, jazz, you name it. That's the that's the only thing I used. 
Like I didn't touch anything else. Never got to play with a Steve Jordan. I love them. I but never they, got to. But uh, the only thing that I have issue probably just been that stupid. Well, not stupid. Those hoops are stupid. Um, <laughs> that drum is great. Uh, this they get chewed up so quick by that. It's probably that I think, it, think it's yeah. It's not the sticks. I think, it's, it's, I think it's just that that drum. <laughs> Because I use the Manhattans for a little bit, uh, the seven A's from Vader. Yeah, I like those a lot, but they're just too short. Yeah, like if they could just make that longer, they probably do. I'm probably just not skilled enough because that's the only thing I'm well, like that'd be that like my a, knowledge uh, sucks on. I am. It's a power seven A. A power seven A is what the yeah. I'm pretty sure all the powers in the Vader are just longer, as where Vic Firth calls that whatever where they have the half an inch yeah um so i think it yeah you have to double check and make sure but i'm pretty sure that's power in vader terms because so. i like the 16 inch length on yeah. those earth skins and i like the the diameter because they have because vader has something in that exact same size and length but it's not hickory it's maple yeah and i'd like to have a a little bit beefier of a of a stick true like hickory or oak or well, something if it's a 7 a diameter the hickory would be better because yeah. I don't like anything. I used to love, was it SD4 combos? For yeah. years. Now I don't think I could play with those sticks because they're, uh, it's a small stick and it's that rock maple. So it's like almost featherweight. Yeah. And I don't think I could play. I, I, I typically want a little more beef, which either means just a bigger stick or like the SD1 General was a, was a rock maple, but it was just a bigger stick. Yeah. Or like something in the medium range, but like you said, hickory. Yeah, um, I haven't. I don't know. I don't think I'll ever. If I if I settle on drums, that'd be great. Settle on cymbals. Wow, amazing. I don't think I could ever settle on a stick. It's so tough. Like I literally, you I think would have to go through and get custom models from someone, and oh, that'd yeah. be the only thing because we'd be like, this is exactly what I want and need, and it's everything. The like, Carter is close for me, really close. Because I'm always having to make compromises for the sticks I use. Because I can never find the one. True. That's why I, I guess we got to make it to Memphis or uh, Nashville one day. And just go well, through. Somebody has literally everything. And just go through all the sticks. Yeah. And just try everyone so it's like, this is the... the <laughs> I hope it's Vic Firth. Because I love their sticks. But like I'm, I'm slowly kind of seeing myself like shifting away. And I hate it. I'm like, no, 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 no. Brand loyalty. But you have this and I like it. <laughs> and it's like, no. It's like... Remo feels so bad, but Evans has coated rezo heads that super fit old drums. I don't have to go through and get the classic fits. It's like and I don't like some of the offerings they have, but it's but that but that's super market specific for like True. that vintage thing. It's like, but I don't want to have dips. I want this instead. You know, I've I've not that I've, I don't know if I've consciously done it, but. I've always moved away from Promark, but I ended back there every time. Yeah. Like, whether I like them or not, like up here, my hands like them. I always end up playing a Promark. So I'm just kind of like you, just kind of like, just giving up on it. Like, that's what the, that's what I like. I'll find a stick eventually. There's enough signature models out there that I'm sure I've never even heard of. Yeah. Um, like I said, that Bob Gatz is pretty close. I like that stick. Um, I'm having to be... What's the word I'm looking for? Protective of them right now because I only have one pair. Yeah. So I can't be like Sundays at the juke joint, regular yeah. gigs, and the practice pad. It's like, yeah, nah, you're no. gonna you're gonna ruin that pair really quickly. Yeah. So I'm having to like, no, yeah, you can play them for a second, but then put them back. Or like, I don't play them at the juke, you know, whatever. I'm trying to save those. I just need to get a bunch more. I'm poised. I have saved up my little pile of cash. I'm ready to buy stuff. I just can't find anything. <laughs> I don't know what to do at this point. I mean, and it's fine. To have to be patient, there's nothing wrong with that. And I have lots of cash and can't find anything to buy, which is, I guess is also a good thing. You know, just stacking up. I keep putting off that whole studio thing every week. It's like, oh, but there's a snare drum. Oh, but my yeah. Below. I mean, I sold my truck today. The one you no, came in. No, the, uh, oh, the, my other one. Oh, okay. So I'll be, that'll be out the door on Monday. Nice. Yeah. So that'll be fifteen hundred dollars to put towards the studio. There you go. Made by so, man. <sighs> it took so long. I'm so happy about it. Made my last payment on my Best Buy card. Nice Wednesday. That is. It was like 24 month. I think was the promo on that. And October would have been the end. So October 
September, August, July, June. So I'm like 19 months into that. It's taken forever. And I walked in there and just had this like huge smile on my face. And she's like, why are you so happy? I was like, I'm making the last payment on what was like $3,000 through Best Buy. She's like, really? I was like, yeah, this is it. I mean, not to say that I'll never be back, but to knock out a big chunk yeah. chunk like that i was so, <laughs> I, was so I bet happy. oh um and every time i do that i get like super excited when i made my last payment on like when i ordered all that sweet water stuff and it feels so good because i'm like yeah that credit card's just going up going up and then i can get whatever else i want yeah but like i said there's nothing to find right now the snare drum hunt is nothing i can't <laughs> i i don't I know we're about to hit like a serious wood shortage yeah. globally and not just like pine for two by fours and stuff like that. Like they're going to hit a wood shortage just because of everything that happened the past year. And I think it's going to be hard to find brand new pieces like whatever's out there is out there. And then it's going to take because we're still like all the stuff Pearl announced for their 75th. None of that stuff is hit anywhere. Yeah. Like I keep an eye out. Just not that I'm buying any of that 75th stuff. I just would like to see when it's in stock. That way I know stores are getting stuff from Pearl, so maybe what I'm looking for would have come in. Yeah. No, everybody's back ordered. And it's been a couple months now, maybe three months. Um, so I think we're going to hit a shortage here, and I think it's going to be really hard to start finding stuff. Um, so I guess if you are looking for something, you might as well grab it while you can. Yeah. Because um, I'm just being picky about a finish, not so much what it is. And I might have to, by the end of the, you know, the whole search, be like, well, you got to buy that one because it might be the wrong finish, but that's the only one you're going to find or what, you know, uh, we'll just have to see. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to hit an interesting time over the next year where people are going to realize head sticks and, you know, actual drums or cymbals. It's going to be hard to get stuff. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad I got everything I got when I needed it. And anything that I'm looking for right now, is just something I'm like pining over. I'm not, I don't need it. Yeah. Um, you know, year around me all the time. I got plenty of stuff to play with. So, yeah. So anyway, um, what are they, what are they yelling about in the chat there before we get started with you today? All right. We got Scott Sherman. Hello. What is up? My man, Scott. Been a while, Scott. It has been. We got Joshua Breslow. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Joshua. Good evening, sir. We got David Huckstep. Hi from Illinois. Ready for a great show. We are also excited. Ready for a great show. Off to a rocky start, but here we are. We are pumped. We are, I mean, y'all can't see it because the camera's, you know, facing this way. There are strippers in the back. They are dancing on drums. It is a virtual party over here. Oh, yeah. Uh, I invited Phil to come sit with us because he's so close and it's very yeah. easy. And he's teaching right now. <sighs> um, but I did say, I was like, hey, man, I don't care. The door's open. Just walk on in and sit down. Yeah. Uh, so I told him to swing by. Maybe he'll swing by when he we'll gets see. done. We'll see. We'll see all Phil. We got Scott Sherman says we have had four gigs in the last three weekends and have booked about nine more for the summer. That is awesome, which means that we are slowly starting to get to play around the U.S., not just us down here where it's all loosey-goosey. Yeah. So I'm good. I'm happy for you, Scott. Congratulations. Yes, play on. everybody. I hope everybody's playing at some point. Oh, yeah. We got Dakamomo. I'm enjoying it. The old off week, that is. And he goes, Pat's into the double glades now. I remember Dakota telling me about Ugh. that. It's because if he's got those big, meaty, Disgusting. sweaty. Disgusting. He's got those big paws and claws he plays I with. I love you, Pat, but you are a gross, disgusting person. Double glaze. Ugh. You see how I big know, his... but man. So our friend Pat has, like, like, you think my hand is, like, my hand, I have, like, little squirrely sissy hands. Pat's hands are, like, bear claws. They're massive. Yeah. And he plays and sings. And he also is like me. He's a larger guy, and he sweats more than I do. Because Pat, I think, plays with his whole body from his yeah from his ears he down works to his for, toes. Yeah, he, he seriously works it. Um, and so he's got to have something to, to hold on to. Man, I just, oh, I've tried those double glaze way back when they came out. I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. It's approaching basically what feels like a painted stick to me. And I hate painted sticks. I've liked so many sticks that are painted. The Buddy Rich is an awesome stick. The Jojo Mayer is an awesome stick. Except for the paint that's on them. Like, yeah, if you could it order gets, it natural. It gets on everything. Well, it gets on everything, and then I, I drop them. Like, I, that, that paint in my hands just does not go well together. I cannot have a painted stick. 
and that's two of probably, I mean, everybody's, I guess, kind of messed with the Dave Luckles at some point. They're great sticks. Yeah. But, man, I can't do it. It's got to be a natural stick with the very minimal clear coat that they put on just like a regular stick. Like, if, like if, I know sometimes Steve Gadd's stick comes in natural, but I don't, I don't like any painted stick. I, if I just supposed to give me the option, like give me a generic name for it, you know, stain them. That's but, easy. Yeah, or like do like Promark does, uh, Vic Firth. Do that fiery shenanigans. Yeah, the fire grain. Yeah, do, I like do, the fire. Yeah. Do something um, like if they that. They offered the fire grain and something other than like standard models, five A, five B. Yeah, like. If somebody came out with a signature that was fire grain, that'd be cool. Because I like those sticks. They lasted a long time. Yeah. I just don't like... It's like everything I like is either just shy of or a little bit over a 5A. I don't like the way a, just a... Stand, it doesn't matter what brand it is. I've never been able to just pick up a 5A and play it. I don't... It doesn't. I don't like right. 5As either. And I don't like seven, I, some 7As. But 5As, I'm not a big fan. Because it's just... Like, the most 5As I've ever get into is probably a good topic today. It's just... It's just it's just so, like, in between. Yeah. Because, like, I have some, like, AJ4s or AJ1s, and they're real light, and that's good to play indoors with the band. But, like, I need more umph. I mean, I always say I need more chutzpah. I need yeah. more, like, something, nothing, like, crazy thick. Like, I'm not talking, like, two Bs or anything. <laughs> but I also don't need a 5A. I just want something to kind of just be a little bit fuller in the hands, but it's also light. And it's tough. I, th- I think it's like you, we were saying. I mean, we'll get to it later. Yeah. But going with signature models. Yeah. I mean, it's probably how you're going to get the closest to something that you really, really like. Um, for a long time, the Carter Beaufort stick, which at the time was a Promark. I think it's Zildjian now. Yeah. Um, which is Vic Firth. Which is Vic Firth. Um, but I, it's they're harder to find now. As when it was Promark, they were just... Trucking. Yeah, well, even if they weren't in the store, everybody could get them because it was a standard Promark, you know, signature model. Yeah. They're a little harder to find now. Uh, but And I found a couple of pair of those when I was sorting out, but I couldn't make one last pair out of it. And I had a brick 15 years ago of those. Um, I wish I could have gotten, uh, and I was actually thinking of it like the weird scenario in my mind of like the black market that deals in old Carter Beaufort signature models, but they're pro mark <laughs> <laughs> instead of instead. Like, man, I got those Carters. Like, you mean the Zildjian's? There's a dude at the pro mark. Yeah, there's a guy in a trench coat with nothing on underneath, but he opens it up and he's got Zildjian on the left on his <laughs> right side, and then pro mark on the left. <laughs> these are twenty. These are ten. <laughs> yeah, it's like like the, the sundial guy from Hercules. Yeah. I got sundials. <laughs> you know. But I thought about that because I was hoping for one last pair. Um, of you know being matched, but maybe I'll have to just keep bite the bullet one day and, and order some of the the Zildjian's just because that was a great stick. I'm sure it's probably the same, yeah, as far as the dimensions and everything. Um, but like I said, we'll get to that here, um, shortly. Um, but anyway, uh, any more comments before we get to your stuff for the week? We got uh, Dave Drake says Vic Firth American Hickory 5B nylon, not a big nylon guy, sometimes. It's cool. I got a cassette of those uh, those Manhattan ones I was using just to have, like, a different texture for, like, a, a stronger ping for, like, jazz stuff on those normally kind of, like, dark and washy to get a little more, like, articulation out. And it works pretty well, but it just – they're not the my favorite to play. I know that Eric Binder exclusively plays nylon. Hugh loves those nylon regal tips. Nylon tips. Um, what are you, a communist? <laughs> Who plays, not only a communist plays nylon tips. If you are a red-blooded American, you play wood tip like the rest of us, and you deal with the shame of having to go through drumsticks. Just like the rest of us, Dave Drake, you're not special. You're not better than us. You should have to ruin sticks just like the rest of us. But again, that's getting too close to the topic for the day. Yeah. Um, Any more? We got Charlie Smith. Found the Steve Gadd sticks to be my favorite. Natural finish version makes them just perfect. I didn't... I thought it only came in painted, Charlie. What the? All right. Well, I'm going to stop been. you there because everybody's going to start talking about sticks and yeah. we're going to ruin our topic for the day. Yeah. Um, so you have a big week, had a big week, are having a big week. Yeah. Um, you, have baby. you still really had a chance to play? I should have kept the picture from last week. The stop sign, Gretch. No, but I'm still tweaking it. I was like, I'm getting these new heads. I might as well just wait until I get them and then just put them on. And then that'll be. I don't blame you. I mean, my. 
patience would have not held. I'd have put some, I mean, I'd have scrapped together some heads and just started playing it. I but mean, I can see why you're waiting. It's all together, and I'm like, that sounds good. That sounds good. That sounds good. Boom, boom, boom. I got to change up the bass drum head. Like I was telling you earlier, that old P3. Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't sit right on it. So I got a somewhere in my stack of heads. I have a clear EMAD. I'm oh, I'm th- sure I'm you do. I'm going to throw on it. <laughs> I think it's from that one from that five finger discount from that uh, CB700 kit I got off the side of the road. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, because that's where that weird also rezo head <laughs> came from that I put on Swindle's kit. Mm-hmm. So I was going to bring it to the juke joint that weekend, mm-hmm. but I had work. So I was like, I got that kit already for you to just be mic it, mic it in, plug in, nice. plug and play. Um, and so I have that rezo head, which means I'll probably throw it on. No, I have that coded ambassador and just pull my old band's logo off because we changed our band name. That's right. You told me that. Yep. Rebranding uh, all around. Oh, yeah. Heads, sticks. Bands, yeah, you got a bit. You had a big week. Well, we'll wait till you get your heads in, then we can get a nice video of it, and you can give us your opinion of what heads work best on what. But because I'd like to be able to get the heads on that kit, and we go to Hughes early, and then oh for sure, Hugh work his magic on and be like, all right, Hugh, put the sauce on it. We go through <laughs> it and just have Hugh just oh, it'll be quick. I'm sure he'll have it. Oh, he, he knows how to tune like those. Fifteen seconds. He'll he'll get the mufflers dialed in because it's top and bottom and everything. <laughs> I'll walk out with a kit and like a million bucks. Hey, that's what he does. Oh yeah. Um, so that's the kit. But something you have been waiting for, and I have a picture before we even get to it. Um, something you have been waiting for for quite a while has come in this week. Go ahead and explain it uh, for the close-up picture just so they know what the model and everything is. That is a 1970s Gretsch stop sign badge aluminum snare drum. Look at that. The model number number is 4108 for all those number nerds out there, which I am not one of them. So not only do you have a stop sign badge Gretsch kit now, but now we can be era specific. You have a stop sign badge snare to go with it. Oh yeah. And it is super dope looking like, I mean, exactly what I would expect. Like the Gretsch version of an Acrolyte, except obviously it has no center bead. Yeah. And it's dope. And the cool thing is about it. Air correct drum key. Nice. Oh yeah. Nice. And I think we talked about that last week that I love that little snap in Gretsch system. Boom. Yep. Never gonna lose Done. it. Never you know where it's at. Um let me see that thing. So nice. like I was like I was saying, um last week there is um uh, an extra hole on the throw off strainer. From where someone had apparently tried a different one, but the guy ended up getting the correct throw off for the drum and put it back in there. Yeah, I see. So that's the correct no biggie. That's, yeah, that's the correct renowned throw off they used uh, on that drum. And then there's a little weirdness in the knob, um, but it still locks just fine. If you go, when you start loosening it up, it'll like stop. Like it's like a, something like in the beach, like you'll see it, you'll feel it. Oh yeah, yeah, it's 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 not straight. Yeah, and I'm I'm not the mad about that. Not straight. Like I don't even care about that. And then those are not the original diecast tubes, but it is. But the drum would have came with diecast tubes back in the day. Yeah. So that's like the new Gibraltar ones. Um, Sounds like aluminum should. And it's got the internal muffler, and it's pretty dry for a drum. I don't own anything that dry, and it's sweet. Uh, yeah, having the muffle. Uh, 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 aluminum drum. You really don't have to do it. I know I throw a, a drum dot mini on my sensitone, but it's not like something you really have. These have that beautiful, almost kind of compressed sound naturally. Is what, yeah. I, what I always liked about uh, uh, aluminum. Yeah, it's it's sharp, man. For it's a little in bit good of time, condition. I'll get the play on it. It's dope. Um, I'm really excited to get some actual like real big boy wires for that drum because it's got just the generic ones that's on it right now. I mean, you can see it's just yeah, no name. Uh, I do like the cord that teal color. That is kind of cool. So I'm probably just gonna use that um, wherever those Pro Marks come in. I mean, not Pro Mark. I mean, it's made by Diodario. Those pure sounds. Um, like uh, you know, very little like. Pitting, not pitting, but like scratches on it. But not, there's nothing's pitted on it, which I think I mean, is to cool. To be this old, it's in really good condition. It's got some scratches on it, but I mean, that's it's from the 70s. It's gonna have some scratches yeah. on it. 
Uh, but other than that, it's in really good condition. Everything looks straight. Everything looks nice. So now you have a complete era correct ba- uh, stop sign badge, full outfit for Gretch. Super excited. <laughs> As if you needed more Gretch. Yeah. <laughs> As if. Um, so yeah, man, that was a uh, that was a killer find. I'm I'm super happy that you got all your stuff. Because there was because there was two drums I was looking. At. There was that one and there was another one. The guy wanted a little bit more for but everything on it was error correct and all the actual parts was like missing like the paper tag and something else Mm -hmm. but then that one sold and then that one's still up that he came down on price on that i was telling you by 150 bucks and i was like i'm gonna just you know do another 25 and see if he takes it and then 15 minutes later when i was leaving break sold and i was like dope accept my offer get him paid yeah you basically outweighed him you know yeah um and it worked out for you oh yeah it's a super, super killer little kit that you got there. And then we get the heads in for the other one, and then we'll have the whole thing, and then Hugh tunes it, and it'll all sound perfect, and then you won't ever have to buy another drum again, right? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Until <laughs> until something walnut comes around. Yeah, or cherry. I'm waiting for that or bra- bra- bronze. That bronze. <laughs> that bronze, dog. No more of the wood, metal only. What's that hammered bronze? See, I've got so much metal that... I, that I've I, I'm short on wood, and that's what I'm hunting now. And I'm the opposite. I have nothing but wood. I got sixteen different flavors of mahogany. I got elder. I got gum, double gum, <laughs> super gum, double maple bubble thick gum. bubble gum. Yeah, I got everything. <laughs> double bubble. <laughs> yeah, I got big kicks and bubble gum, and I'm all out of gum. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, again, patience, eBay, and reverb. That is the combination for finding anything. Oh yeah, <laughs> and a little bit of luck. Uh, yeah, I need. That's what I need at this point. I've got patience. <laughs> I've got reverb and eBay. I need a little bit of luck because I am ready. The I've already pulled the hammer back. I'm just waiting. As soon as I see something, I'm not even going to be like. I'm probably not going to care about price. It's just going to be like, bye now. Bam! Just tr- done. Pull the trigger. Whoever lists it's going to be like, wow, that was quick. Because I'm. I have alerts. We talked about it last week. I've got <laughs> alerts all over the internet. <laughs> I got guys who know guys who know guys. There like are guys <laughs> combing the streets. <laughs> hey, man, you got that maple gum? Nah, man. <laughs> Let me ask Dave, though. Dave, Dave, you got that? Dave, maple gum? Yeah, you got maple gum? 5.5? Oh, only five, man. Sorry. So close. Let me ask Jerry. And then it just <laughs> keeps going and going. It's like a, a web of just dudes on street corners <laughs> asking for maple gum. Like I said, I have no problem being patient. I've got... Fun stuff to play with. Um, I did something today that I have not done in a long time. I should have hooked up that GoPro so we could have pointed at the kit. I Did you even notice what I did? Yeah, I noticed you put the little spiral stacker on the old... No, that is no? not what I am referring to. Oh, goodness. He's got two up, one down, baby. Look at you. I have not played a five-piece in... I don't know how long. I have also not played a five piece. I don't know. It's a long, more than 10 years. I played a five piece for a day when I got that. DW? No, that Yamaha. Oh, okay. Forever ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that for a day and I was like, oh, I don't like that. And the last one I played a five piece was whenever I owned that kit. Yeah, yeah. And that's even further back. And I played it for a five piece for a while. And then I had to keep bringing all f- three times with each of the gigs and so I said none of this 12 went away and I was 10 14 20 I don't know why I did it um I think probably just to mix things up a little bit I'm enjoying it it's fine I don't know if it's gonna stick um obviously I'm so used to playing a four piece I want to learn how to to love a five piece it's just it's it's the ride it's literally I don't know how to get it right um I think for me it's kind of it's kind of always been the ride, but I think also I was always thinking of it. Man, I really should have set that GoPro up, that where we could I, I could literally be pointing this thing at the kit right now. Um, I think it has to do with you know when you have one up and one down, you can pr- usually get that twelve because it's bigger yeah. than the ten. Obviously, you can get it almost in front of you, like squared up. Yeah. And then when I set it, everything else up or every five piece I ever owned, everything kind of shifts a couple of inches to the right. So it m- it's more like everything fans this way. Yeah. It doesn't feel even in the middle. And I think that's what I fought all those years 
kind of transitioning naturally to a four piece. And, but I have to admit, sometimes I do miss, you know, you do a fill and you, you like, you land the fill perfectly. You come out on the one, but you, in your head, you knew that whole time in the seconds following where you're like, man, it would have felt even more even, or I wouldn't have had to work so hard to get from here down to here if I had that other tom. Yeah. So I'm just trying it. We'll see what happens. It's not, it's not like it would take that much more to bring the other tom out, even though I really don't play that kit that much. Yeah. Um, and the Midtown is four piece naturally. Um, but we'll see. Um, I had fun with it today practicing, and I was like, oh, that's right. When you have that other tom, you don't, you can just go around. Another possibility. Well, but it's just like, it's like a stair coming from the 10 down to the 12, down to the 14. There's not a gap there. Yeah. We got to cover it or accidentally hit the ride, which is I do that all the time. Um, so we'll see. Um, just going to play with it uh, probably off this weekend. Nothing but practice. See you on Sunday. And then obviously nothing but practice all week. And then I play on Friday again. Uh, so I might take that if everything goes well. Um, I might take that with me on Friday to Glory Bound. And see how the old five piece plays out. It'll be oh, weird. Yeah. I haven't done it in a long time. And it even looks weird just to look at it. It's like, hmm, doesn't look right. But anyway, change it up. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if you could ask for more than that, at least for right now. Brand new uh, 70s era full Gretsch outfit. Yeah. All right. Now I'm good. Well, um, like I said, maybe both of us catch a little luck on the stuff we've been looking for, and we'll see what happens. Oh, yeah. Just be patient. Anything from the guys before we move into their stuff for today? We got Charlie Smith said, The GAD was launched in natural about three or four years back. For me, it took a great stick, a level up. No more black marks on anything. They feel great, aren't too long, and I get plenty of use out of them. Dave Drake said, LOL. Oh, and then I called him a communist. And then Dr. Lomo said, juke this weekend for that drum. Of course, while we're bringing out. Oh, the that. snare drum? Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll bring it out in its shape right now for us to bang away on the ones that got the new heads. We'll do a whole nother. Yeah. That'll be the second Gretsch you brought out that sounds killer. Oh, yeah. But I already have that one in a pearl, so I'm good. I don't have to go hunting for that. Be like, oh, man, now I want a aluminum one. We don't have a seamless we, uh, or beadless aluminum, so that's a whole different thing. But I'm going to check out those Steve Gads, though, those naturals. I didn't Charlie's. know they did that in a natural. Because I, I did take a, a huge break from drums in college, and that is about that time frame. And then Cosmo mentioned the Vic Firth Keith Carlock. I never yeah, got that's to, I never got to play well. those. I'm going to have to just get like one of that's everything. That's got another tiny little tip. It's easy to ruin. Um, I had a bunch of those. Not when he was Vic Firth, when he was from, Regal Tip. Oh, Regal Tip. I yeah. forgot about that. Um, and I loved them and tore them up. Like the Benny Greb and Keith Carlock, I can't play at gigs. Um, being in a top 40 cover band, it's just not It's not for that. that. Those little tips are just, you know, too delicate to be doing. I love rock and roll. It just, they don't, they don't hold up. But that Keith Carlock is a nice one. The Benny Greb is a nice one. I would love to see some natural finish gads. That would be cool. Um, so uh, is that caught us up over there yep okay all caught up well let's go ahead and get into the viewer submissions for the week and i think jared did you actually write down oh all? i got everyone you okay throw the, you throw the picture up and i gotta go through and figure out who it is but i got it all i think we will start because he has the most pictures we'll start with mr josh breslow our very own bespoke drummer i believe josh got to go to the Chicago Drum Show. So did Mike, and I'm very jealous because I got to watch their, I got to watch Mike's video, and then yeah, see Mike did a really good uh, Mike Malone drums on YouTube. Go to his channel; he did a great walkthrough of the entire, well, at least it looked like the entire show. Yeah, um, great video, a lot of cool stuff, and I did see like all the the shops that we follow typically yeah. on Instagram were pumping out deals to trying to get everything moved that didn't sell, I guess at the show. Yeah. Um, so there were some good deals out there. It looked like there were some really cool drums, um, from some of the vintage dealers at the show, but also like tackle instrument was there. There was like some of the cool, the cooler companies were there too. Like the smaller. Yeah. Burn symbols had a guy out there with the booth doing yeah. stuff. Um, part of like his drums he's given off. Uh, tiny tubs was there. Eric yeah. Binder I and his love crew. tiny tubs. 
Um, somebody had, and I can't remember if it, I think it might have been Tiny Tubs. Somebody had a weird kit up this week, and I can't remember. I think it might have been Gretch, but it was like 12, 12, 18, 14. It was weird, but it looked cool. Like the finish of the kit, I, I have to go back and look at Instagram. I can't remember if it was Tiny Tubs or one of the ones that we typically follow, um, but it was a weird, and they even said in the description, weird sizes, 12, 12, 14 with an 18-inch kick. Um but actually, that leads us into Mr. Josh Breslow. So, like I said, Josh went to the Chicago Drum Show this week and picked up these beauties right here. And Jared, I believe, has the uh, descriptions. As the the description on at the beginning is that on any specific snare. Um. So the first one I have is the drum on the right side, the black one. Okay. That is a Lion and Healy. Okay, and so that's a different drum now. Oh, I'm trying to find it. Okay, okay there we okay. go. So that one is a Lion and Healy uh, company from the 19, sorry, 1890s. They built instruments, and they're still in business today making harpist chords. Yeah, they make, like, like, if you play in the symphony, like, they make what I could only imagine could be probably on average $10,000 harps. Like... Really like the big ones that are like hand carved, and 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 if you go to their website because I have gone to their website before trying to date the sixteen inch, which we believe is the the um the vintage one I have here, single tension. Uh, we think it's a Lion and Healy, as close as we could get to identifying it, mainly because, and I don't know if it has it, um, on these pictures. Uh, mine has painted hoops. It has the same tension rods as you're seeing here in the photo. It had the same uh, leg mechanism on the side. The leg, it's not a pad. It's really just a wire, but, you know. It's like, like a guard. Yeah, uh, like the leg rest. Um, but it's got the same tensioning system that you see there, the same snare tensioner. But mine has painted hoops. So I had gone to the Lion and Healy website to try to date mine and figure out if that's what it was. But we think that's what I have. And it looks very similar to what he has. And they're yeah. really cool drums. Um, they're a little harder to find than some of the typical stuff. Um, but I did learn a lot about that brand um, when trying to figure mine out. So here is another shot of the that drum. I said I got a... Nope. Um, so he's only got the one shot by itself of the line in Healy. Um, and there wasn't a size for that drum. I'm assuming that is... Uh Probably another five by either fourteen or five by fifteen. Yeah. Um, and then the other drum, which is right there. So this is a John Church Company. Uh, they are out of Cincinnati, Ohio. They were the leading vendor for sheet music and other instruments, but their main focus was pianos. I think I have the. Uh, I'm trying to find the. And that is a that, nope. That's the paper tag for that one. Where is there? It is the John Church Company, Cincinnati, Ohio. And that that font for musical instruments and merchandise reminds me of all of the old like old wanted posters and stuff yeah, you yeah. see in westerns. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. That's right. <laughs> um. So let me go back to the shots of that drum. Right there, I, those hoops look great. I love those hoops. That is, and I don't, I don't know if this is like I don't think he wrote in the thing. This is like after cleaning or before cleaning. If that's before cleaning, like a little bit of like wood oil, those hoops are gonna pop because that's got some really pretty grain on it. And to be honest with you, between the two, that one looks like more of a player. No, nope, I keep going the wrong one. Um, than that one, they both look in fine condition. Yeah, but that one just looks a little sturdier. Um, there's the snare mechanism. Ex it was identical um, to most of the ones that ha of that era. They always have like that kind of embellishment on the top of the the strainer where you twist it. I love that. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, I, so I'm so what is it the word romantic about drums from that era? Um, but the, it, a nice little pair that he you've picked up there. Where's my original shot? And you said they were both affordable at the show and yeah. unique. That he, he didn't he didn't list a, he didn't list a price or anything, um, 
So that is the two snares. And did he say anything about the next picture coming up, whether he got that at the show uh, as well? Uh, the Ludwig and Ludwig? Yeah. Yes, he also got that at the show as well. Okay. So well, this right here is I'm super jealous of. So that is a Ludwig and Ludwig 15 by 17. He posed a question to us. Okay. And he said, um, think about tricking into a kick drum, and should he strip it or keep the finish the way it is? You already know what I'm going to say, and I'm pretty sure I know what you're going to Do say. Do not touch it. Don't touch it. it. I will it come is. up to where you are, and I will punch you in the kidneys, and I will take that from you. Yeah, because basically you've got the same thing Carter has, a 17-inch... Um, I think his was actually just a bass drum. Yeah, his was a, ba- a bass drum that was that was not cut down. Yeah, that's the exact size that they made that drum. You have a super dope um, field snare that you're going to turn into a kick drum, which, which is I the, think, it, it, which exactly is, what I would do with that. Yeah. if I had it, um, that's a, it probably going to sound really good. It looks like it's in really good condition. That all your claws and all everything looks straight, um, and I love that finish. I mean, I think it looks cool. Um, it'll make a nice little, uh, you know, you could put a little Frankenstein kit together, you know, anything like that. But I would not refinish it. I would leave it as is. I think it's beautiful looking. And I would I would expect great sounds to come from that as a little single tension bass drum for sure. I wouldn't tune, tune into a bass drum. Um, personally, for the, the sole reason is that I just have a hard time finding actual field drums that are that large in size. That aren't completely destroyed, yeah, or are extremely expensive, yeah. Because to play uh, a, a marching drum, anything less than that, just to me, it doesn't feel the same. Like that little parade snare I got from Hugh that yeah, you now yeah. have, it's just there's just not enough beef to it. I mean, even though it is fourteen or ten by fourteen, or whatever, it's still for like a snare drum. I just could never get it be dialed in. And I bet if you took that bad boy and you put a the thickest the double ply head you could possibly find, and you put like those uh, the Renaissance bottom snare head on that, and throw you a, a modern throw off uh, with some real wires. You talk about probably a dope sounding, just big massive. I'd play three camps for like ten hours on that thing. I would go find a Evans MX1 marching bass drum head and put it on that. I think that would sound. Really good. Um, but either way, you've got a super cool drum of, of a good era of Ludwig. You know, hard that's a hard-to-find era. Yep. Um, and it looks like it's in, you know, good order. So uh, either way, I would say both of us agree. Don't refinish it. Just yeah, leave it as it. Leave it. Don't touch it. You got a cool piece there. It looks like you pretty much struck gold by going to the show at Chicago. You came up with two cool snare drums and a, a bass drum, all single tension. And he's got the good clip on... Uh, legs too. He's got the the Slingerland style, the big tall yeah, boys, yeah. not the small little crappy ones. Yeah, that's cool. And then the last thing, I think he said he only paid like thirty, 30 bucks for bucks. Yeah, thirty bucks. I've been eyeing one as well because I think it's dope to put on that big Slingerland, the old classic um, stick holder that Ludwig made. Yep, I've never owned one of those. They are cool looking, and if you can get like a, a good condition one, for thirty bucks is completely fair. Oh yeah, um, that's completely fair. I'd pay even fifty bucks for it if it's like. Well, his looks yeah. like it's in really good condition. Yeah, no pitting. It's not rusted out or anything. No, uh, it obviously clamps on just fine because we're seeing it in the photos. So. And it's still got good tension. That it's bending to hold his sticks in, so it's not super stiff and going to mark his his stuff up a whole lot. Yeah. So definitely, um, if anything. You scored at the drum show for sure. Absolutely, um, a little I, jealous. I know. Well, lie. well, we we've talked about it. And <clears throat> obviously, Jarrett and I want to try to make it to that one day. And if we ever get lucky, you know, maybe somebody will fly us out there. It'd be nice. And or we just have a you have a bunch of really good <laughs> gigs, and I have like a super solid week. Yeah, a couple weeks at work to where I can afford to to take off, and you can too for us to drive or. And, Cool thing we to be able just to fly and not make it so miserable to go from here all the way up to where's it at? Chicago. Chicago. God, I don't want to drive to Chicago. And plus, I'm just happy that they even had the show this year. Yeah, which that, is awesome. Them getting back to some sense of normalcy is uh, is definitely a good thing. Yeah, like you have uh, like Steve Maxwell was out there with his son. 
um, showing off some stuff. He had Eric Binder out there with Tiny Tubs doing his thing. Mike got to go get his old kit back. Um, and then Josh gets these super sweet snare drums. I got to see some guys post online all the cool stuff they got. I was, and then some other like vendors and stuff. Like I know, I think Tackle Instrument Supply like got to show off their new uh, stick bag yeah, yeah. out there. The new the bifold. I think it looks dope. And it looks they super neat. <coughs> Everything they put out looks cool. Yeah. I mean, they don't put out crap, so um, maybe one day we will get lucky. But thank you, Josh, so much for sharing that with us. Um, you really struck gold, and I'm glad you got to go. I hope it was a good time, and I hope it was, uh, you know, n I guess at least similar to what you're used to as far as the experience of that big drum show. Yeah. I know it's a lot smaller now, but, you know, still very cool that you got to go. Is that a plane it's or we're being plane. attacked? Yeah. Um, so, uh, moving on. Thank you, Josh. Now we get to <clears throat> Mr. Mike Malone, who, again, cannot be with us tonight because, yay, he has a gig. So he's playing. That's never a bad thing. And do you have the descriptions, or did I even give it to you? For? I do, and also I've been talking to him about it. So okay. I, know, I know exactly what so he's got. So the first up, which one do you want? Either one. I'm okay. well-versed with both of these. Bam. So what we got here... It was a Gretsch new classic in 10, 12, 14, 16 for the toms, and then he's got an 18 and a 20-inch for the kick. Now, the Gretsch new classic, that was around the time of as the marquee was being introduced, if I'm not mistaken. That's basically like a renown with Gladstone lugs. Yeah. Um, just It's just... Like a dressed-up renown. Yeah, it's just seven-ply maple. Um, they're killer drums, and they have really dope finishes if you can find them. Use like that's a Merlot Sparkle, if I'm not mistaken. Either it's either Merlot or it's, it's that dark black. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, they had back in the day. They had a cool, really pretty bronze glitter glass that they did on uh, a lot of those. And I love that turquoise <coughs> they used to have too. That like kind of sky blue. Looking, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that super sparkle with it, so dope. They're nice drums. Um, this is this the one that was his previously? Yes. Okay. So, he so got, he's getting them back. Basically. He's getting them back, and then he's uh, going to keep the um, the eighteen, twelve, fourteen, and then sell off the ten, sixteen, twenty two. Nice. I I couldn't do it. I'm like God. You have you have such like if it was me, I would totally do like the Elvin Jones kind of deal um, with the ten, twelve. 14, 16, 18, even though he played a 16-inch kit, our kick, it's still, I'd be, I'd, I've always think it's so dope when you get to have, like, two up, two down with an 18. Like, you have so much room <laughs> above yeah. the bass drum to put wherever you want, and, like, an 18s sound amazing anyway, so you're not, yeah. really, you're not really, you're not fighting for space. To me, it's like, it's just a, like, the ergonomics of having that kit out, like, to play all those toms if you wanted to would be absurd and be beautiful. It's a good looking kit. I mean, that oh, would yeah. be <clears throat> that would be especially, you know, something that you wouldn't be afraid to take out and play a lot. No, because it's a good kit. It's a good, good quality. Not a cheap kit. <clears throat> no, but definitely not something you'd be afraid of scratching up or something like that. Yeah, that and they're getting and they're getting kind of harder to find uh, mm -hmm. as the years go on. Yeah, I'm sure the market will just go up and up and up for those. You know, yeah. as they become like a a collector's piece. Um, so that's super cool, and I'm glad that you got your kit back. Um, but that's a definitely a nice showing. And then we have the next one. So that is a Gretsch Playboy outfit. I almost got that a while back. I um, almost bought that exact kit, that one in particular. But I was thrown off by the floor, Tom, and that's why I didn't get it. But it is kind of cool that our boy Mike Malone got it. <laughs> so it's like seven ways to Kevin Bacon. So the Playboy outfit was a thing Gretsch did where they had center mass lugs across all the drums. Now, the rack tom and the bass drum are original together, but that floor tom is a Keller maple that was made to fit it. All that hardware is correct, and that's why I didn't get it, but apparently to Mike Maloney goes, you can hardly tell when the whole kit's being played together. Goes and it compliments the guy did a really good job, whoever it was. Yeah, he got that from Hawthorne um, Drum Company or Hawthorne Drum Shop. Yeah, but I've always loved the Playboy kits because a cool thing about them, 
is that they were re- recently reintroduced through uh, Chicago Drum Exchange. You can get a Brooklyn Series kit and white marine, the 60s white marine pearl with the vintage build out, but it comes as the Playboy instead. So you get the between the single flange, the 301s, the 302 hoops, but you get it with center mass lugs and extended floor tom. Uh, tension rods and bass rods for yeah. it. And he gets all thumb screw uh, for the bass room and everything. So I you, think so the you, center lugs look super sharp. I love center lugs. So they look so good. Yes, they're paying the butt because you have that much rod to deal with. True. To like, to like to bend or break or anything. But they look so classy. Yeah, they do. Just, well, especially on vintage kits. Um, that's why I like that. Um, I've shown you a couple times that Franklin Drum Company. Yeah. They do all theirs in the same thing. And I just, I just like the way it looks. It's just a very classy looking set up. And I can't tell the difference between that just like at, at, at a glance you can't tell the difference between that floor tom and the rest of the kit like it no, matches that, up perfect the guy who did that job did an amazing job to match it like it's yeah um maybe a little difference in the grain but it came from a completely different piece of wood so it's yeah. totally understandable and then like he said if you know when playing it you really can't tell the difference you know it's a perfect little setup yeah and i love Probably not so much earlier in life, but especially now. I love natural finished drums. Whether it's dark or light, depending on the wood, doesn't matter. But yeah. just a natural finish. It can be high gloss or it can be satin. I love something in natural. It goes with everything. Because he thought about um, getting those drums wrapped to be more like air specific yeah. and correct. Um, I was like, Merlot Sparkle would be dope. I was like, I would love, and he doesn't like those finishes. I'm like, that'd be dope in that like Mardi Gras finish. Yeah, you get the yeah, black with the black flake, flake mm-hmm. or you can like maybe see if Gretsch will do it for you, or maybe Steve Maxwell will probably be all for it if you can get a, convince him to let him do it. I know they make a custom finish just for Steve Maxwell, the confetti, the birthday oh, yeah, confetti. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, try to get the the white. Instead of the black with all the rainbow sparkles and bits and bobs in it. Because that would be dope. I would love to see that kit and like a funky finish. I agree. It would look good. But I say leave it. It looks really good. It's sharp. It's clean. Uh, that's that's a definitely another cool pickup. And now, now he, I mean, y'all are, y'all are just sitting fat on Gretsch at this point. We're the Gretsch boys, man. I mean, y'all really are. Y'all are, y'all are grabbing left and right and sitting pretty fat on all Is the Is that Gretsch a pioneer thing. in the background? Uh, it's either a Pioneer or just one of the older, like, 20s or 30s chrome over brass. It looks like a Ludwig. Um, if he were here, he could let us know, but I think that's probably similar to my Pioneer or just the, what do they call it, the Universal, the dance model. Yeah. One of those, so. Oh, I forgot. I almost bought it this week. I didn't do it. If it's still up next week, I'll get it. They have basically your Pioneer, but it's a Gretsch for 125 Oh, nice. Single tension. Yeah. Yeah. Snag it. I'll do it when we get done. Yeah, nice. I'll just, I'll just buy it whenever we get done. I'll <laughs> there be there. <laughs> <laughs> but still, I'll just be like, all right, boom, boom, boom. Thanks, Nelson. Uh, so that is it. Thank you, Mike Malone, for sending that stuff in. Hope you are completely happy once you get to mess around with your Playboy. And glad that you got your new classics back. And Josh struck gold with the two snare drums and the bass drum. Um, I hope to see some picks from you once you get everything set up and uh, maybe, you know, Josh is good at coming up with little kits of stuff. So I'm sure he'll, he's probably already thinking about what he's going to use that bass drum on or if he's going to use it as a bass drum. Oh yeah. I did um, forget to mention he is going to have the front head on it uh, painted to kind of be like that other one that we showed last week with Let the cool, like, find I know the, the term is not correct to say gypsy, but I don't know what that that hand you would call that. Yeah, yeah. I think of like fortune teller. That head you're talking about right there? I think he's going to have like a different one, but he wants the same, like, he wants the front head to be painted and that similar style. Not that his, oh, I his got buddy you. Did. I got you. I got yeah. you. And that looks sweet. Like, he keeps the yellow, keeps the black coops, and yeah. then has like that, that old school, like, carny yeah, yeah. kind of thing. That'd be dope. I would love to see that and like a, like, any like jam band or like, blues band or like even mm-hmm. get like funky like maybe like i could like a dixie band that'd be dope to have that and i just i that's like one of my other like favorite things is like seeing that chip paint and it's, yeah and it's, i love the patina like i mean it's not t- technically patina but for a loose term the patina on that drum with all the scratches and everything it looks cool 
Um, and, I, and I would imagine it's probably going to end up sounding real cool as well. So, as always, thank you to everybody that sent in stuff for the oh, week. Oh, yeah. And if you want to send anything in video, keep it under 30 seconds. Or if you want to send in pictures, just send it to all lowercase bearded drums at gmail.com. You can also find the Bearded Drums fan page on Facebook. Simply search Bearded Drums. Jared kind of keeps up with that. So if you have any questions for Jared, or if there's something you want us to talk about on the show or not talk about, yeah, let us know there. So you can get us on Facebook at the Bearded Drums fan page, or you can do beardeddrums at gmail.com and to send your short videos or your pictures. And don't forget, landscape. Set your phone to the side. Yes, always landscape. We are not on Instagram, so never vertical. Um, now, before we move into the topic for today, are they yelling in the comment section? So, we got... And try to skip any stick comments. Okay, I'll... Just so uh, we have... We'll, will, we'll go I'll back skip, and do them... Uh, I'll skip Richie because he said plus one. To add on for a stick I should get and try. Oh, okay. Okay. He uses plus one for the Keith Carlock. Richie says, good morning, beautiful dudes. Can't stay long, but love to you and love to you as well, Richie. Glad to see you. And then we got Josh Breslow says, I will keep it like it is. Good. Nice. Nice. You better keep it. Otherwise, we cut <laughs> my kidneys. <laughs> I'll drop off another drum in its place, but I'll, I will, if you even... Dare put sandpaper next to it. It's <laughs> over. The most we'll let you do is like clear coat to like yeah to protect to, it to protect it. <laughs> so as far as go. we'll go outside of that, you're done. <laughs> Don't even sand the clear coat if you have to. Like barely do it. But that's it for comments. We're all caught up. Nice. All right. Well, and I would like I said, if we may get lucky that we might just hear the door rattle and old Phil will walk in and join in on our conversation. Maybe not. If he doesn't, that's fine. Um, but like I said, he is right around the corner. Yeah. So I need to be uh, more uh, vigilant about telling him, hey, man, just come on by. We don't care. Uh, another person adding to the conversation is always good. I feel bad about totally sleeping on him on Sunday, him trying to catch a ride with me. And I had to do my nap before the gig, and I just overslept and had to run out of the house. So, Phil, I was not dodging you. I just didn't see my phone. Taking a nap, man. You got to do it. That's such a late gig. It is. And, and last and you deserved it because last Sunday was an interesting one to say the least. What happened? It all blends together for me. What happened this Sunday? Things we probably shouldn't say uh, out to the public. I'm trying to think what happened now. Oh wait, somebody got arrested, right? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Two people got it. Oh, that's yeah. right. <laughs> we didn't leave till six. <laughs> we made sure Jeez. we made sure that Brandy got home safe. That's right. We had to make sure Brandy got home safe and. Okay, that's right. So yeah, yeah and I stayed and stalked those boys. They just came to get their car and they left. That's all they did. They're just waiting for us to leave because they probably felt shame. Yeah, shame on you for acting bad at the bar. But yeah, as as usual, the juke lived up to the Sunday reputation of at doesn't, least being eventful. Doesn't disappoint. Never. Never disappoints. Never. Even when it's slow, it's still good. Yeah. There's always something. <laughs> Someone's gonna get angry. <laughs> Oh, it never never lets me down. No. Um, okay, so <clears throat> moving into the topic for today, you probably guessed, because we were kind of hinting at it in the comments section, talking about drumsticks. Sticky sticks, <sighs> sticks, sticks. That's a big one. This is one, of those, a, uh, and it's I one think of those multifaceted ones we can always come back to later and, and deep dive more because it's... Yeah, because Doc Amomo had suggested it, I think, as a topic, and I was like, man... That's so broad and would take so long to discuss. Um, but I guess, like you said, if you kind of break it down into specific sections, yeah, you know, uh, it's a little easier to, to, to digest and kind of we can also kind of throw our gripes in there, too, because like there's some things with stick companies and how and some sticks. I'm like, why? Yeah, because like that's probably a good place to start. Like weird gimmicks with drum sticks. Every headhunter stick they put out. It's all like here's rattle balls on this, and <laughs> and here's brushes on top of wooded whatever contraption with cast. Like you put like cast nets on a stick, and it's still a drumstick. I get that because that's cool. Cause you got to play like multiple parts going through like a, in like a percussive setting or the double sided. You have a mallet on one side, and then you have an actual stick on the other side. Yeah. Like that's super handy to have if you're doing like multi percussion. Like you have to have like you can't just go. 
you know, like you have to be able to be like swap and then you're playing the next part. You know, you have no breaks. Like I used to use a couple pairs of those in high school and college band because I'd have to go through and play like a snare part and then turn around and then do a suspended cymbal roll yeah. and then smack the uh, the best drum. Like I was telling you for, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you for freshman band, we are doing um, America from West Side Story. And the way the freshman band works, it's only freshmen who are in the band. No one else can join. It's literally just the freshman band kids. And that means like, oh, how many percussion guys did you have? There was two of us. It was me and Kyle Quist. <laughs> Kyle played mallet. So Kyle was playing glockenspiel. And I want to say the vi- – no, he was playing – Marimba for that piece. I think he also played Zylo for the very end. No, he did play Zylo for part of the... the, 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 the dun, 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 dun. Charlie's what I'm talking about. Charlie's Charlie's in the, the orchestral Broadway show game. So Cal's doing all the uh, the pitched percussion stuff. And I'm playing snare with a cross stick, suspended cymbal, and a bass drum. Concert bass. Normal concert bass technique. You have the big old fluffy mallet, generally. Bass drum's on its side. You got a big towel hanging over it, or you have your knee on it, and you're and you, when you hit a concert bass, we don't go into it like you do with a regular drum. You glance. You glance. Like, you bounce it off. Like, well, I don't have time to do that. So <laughs> I have the full towel over across the entire drum, and I have one of those double-sided mallets backwards holding traditional grip like this to strike the bass drum, playing the inner beat snare part with my right hand, and then have to swap them to the suspended cymbal roll, and then, like, crash at the same time going, shkoom. Like it was dumb. Like I'm over here like playing. Ba- I should like should have had just a drum kit, but no, it's got to be. No, yeah, it's got to yeah. have the actual sounds for the part that was written. But like you said, that's when those kind of, especially multi instrumental orchestral uh, kind of sticks come into play perfectly. Yeah, um, like a percussion ensemble. You get, you know, sometimes that's needed to play because <clears throat> you have multiple things going on. Yeah. Um, I remember uh, one of the few gimmicks I remember that I liked um, was uh, the uh, that stick with the hump on uh, Billy Ward, the Billy Ward. But also there was a company I want to say they were called True Balance made nothing but those sticks. Yeah. So right where your palm would go on the drumstick, there was like a hump of wood. So you actually had something to grab onto that would fill in the gap of your palm. Um, I remember liking those, and the only thing, the reason I ever like stuck with them is because, like I said, that company, I want to say it's called True Balance, either went out of business, they don't make them anymore, and I guess the only other stick that's like that is the Billy Ward stick, which I, who even makes the Billy Ward stick? Do oh, you it was know? Promark, if I'm not mistaken, was the so one So if that they made still it. make that, I guess you could get that. Um, but that was like, like it was a very comfortable, they didn't get in the way, it was very comfortable, and it wasn't <clears throat> like the hump kind of, hindered you from switching to from like sticking it wrist to using your fingers like it was still very easy to use um so that was one thing i thought was like that's a simple little fix and you see it a lot in the reverse form like the tree lock gear two stick that has the indentation for your thumb yeah and when i and i told you this when i ordered those bob gatson sticks i saw that little indentation in the stick and i was like oh he does the little thumb press thing as well come to find out when you get the sticks in that they did that for balance purposes yeah. so um but i've seen a bunch of that either in the reverse form like an indent into the stick or the hump on the stick i thought was a useful if that suits your feel yeah. you know for what you're looking for in the hands i thought that was at least a useful gimmick for drumsticks um a lot of them were bad but that was one that i did notice that you know i i liked yeah, I also like, like the Louis Belson sticks I got from you that have the tambourine jingles on them. Yeah. Because that's cool because you get that extra, like, shimmer of of the tambourine without having an actual tambourine over your hi-hat or something else. But again, it was a foot. simple, it wasn't like, we came up with this multifaceted, no, they took a screw and they literally drilled in two tambourine jingles into that's the side. It. Yeah. So let's keep it simple, stupid. Like, yeah. that was another, like... And granted, I just don't have the greatest of technique to control them because I don't know if this is like you or anybody out there. My sticks tend to roll in my hand when I'm playing, especially if I'm doing something fast or complicated. Yeah. That stick is basically spinning in my hand because I'm doing this. 
and I would always, and they would end up flipped over, and I'd start smacking the drum, and I could feel the jingle actually hitting the drum head. I was like, oh, that's not good. I'm going to... I'm going to punch right through the drum or something like that. So yeah, those take a little bit more like active thought to make sure you're, you're playing. Yeah. Because I've been playing around with them, and I play on them uh, on like different surfaces, like around the house to see what yeah. it sounds like. <laughs> like I'm outside on, on my kayak, like, I don't know what this sounds like, hitting a stick against a giant plastic tub. With it. And it sounds pretty cool. It's like <laughs> it gets, you get real tight articulation from the plastic, and you have a little I'm like, yep. that's kind of cool. It's like if I need to record something crazy, like a little sound bite or something like that, that'd be a cool sound to use. I'm also weird, like to go around my uh, house yeah. and, and beat on different things. Cause that's okay. Stuff that's sounds, a Gene Krupa thing to do. Yeah, it sounds neat and it's fun. And Glenn Koch is notorious for doing stuff like that. Yes. So I'm like, he will hit just about anything. So I'm like, well, this hang is a fun. dead squirrel from a triangle mount or something like that. Contact um, mics, baby. Sounds so <laughs> cool on those those whisks. It's like, yeah, it sounds yeah, like yeah. thunder, man. It's so I was like, I'm like that's he genius. Gets some cool sounds. Um, oh yeah. But like I said, just that that's two instances. You know, the one I said and the one you mentioned, where it was good. You know, and let us know of like things that they've done gimmick style with drumsticks or mallets. Uh, things that you do or you don't like. Let us know in the comments so we can kind of go over those as well. God now, did. what? I'm about to say those. You first. Let's I was gonna say, do you have one you don't like? I okay, I have a couple. I well, don't I know, like. but just go ahead and start. One with I the, really don't like is those daggum head sticks with the rubber sleeves. I was gonna oh, mention that. God, it's like here's a metal tube you have to play a metal stick, and it's probably not the most machined for balance. So you're already goofing up there. It's only nylon tip. Then you gotta have the dang rubber sleeve that goes on it. And then if you hit the side of everything, you're going to cut the sleeve all the way down. You're going to start hitting metal on metal. If you're in the middle of a gig, I hope you have some. If you're in the middle of a gig and you don't have sleeves and you're playing cymbals incorrectly, you're literally taking a metal tube and smashing against a metal cymbal. You're going to crack it. You're going to break something. I can't remember if I stuck them in here. I either stuck I them in here or they're in that drawer because I was like, I'm never going to use these. I hope they're in this one. I cannot stand those sticks. I, I, I didn't I, for for that very reason I did not put them in here because they're stupid. It was the and it was the marching version. What even like the drum set sticks, the black ones? It was the white ones, the marching version. Now I guess for marching, there is never a reason to have I as unless well, I was, I was unless you are doing indoor and you're doing some like very avant garde indoor stuff for like weird textures. There's no need. I mean, because marching drums are already, you get one sound, and true. it's a tabletop. Very true. That's it. I mean, I didn't mean to hit the table, but it's it's that, it sounds like a tabletop. It's for mica, you're playing for mica tables. I mean, <laughs> it, to put it clearly, I mean. We I remember back in the day, there was a guy that would come into Pinkston's a lot, and he was always breaking cymbals. And why does everybody think he was breaking cymbals? Using them. Daggone metal ahead. Got exactly. And he played so hard and hit things so hard. He would on the regular break those sheaths that went around, you know, will be the shoulder of the stick, which is the part that you could take off. You know, you unscrew the tip and you could pull the You change them out. The shoulder yeah. off of the stick and change it. And he went through them constantly. And I was just like, dude. If you're going through synthetic plastic sheaths. For those sticks, you're hitting way too hard. Besides the fact that you're breaking all your cymbals constantly. And probably just improper technique playing. Yeah. Like if, like, like one that drives me nuts, it's like tangent. There's guys that play their cymbals flat, all those uh, post-core kids yeah, and yeah. stuff. I'm like, and they're just like whacking and they're playing. There's just pounding. And you see guys on like Instagram with like broken cymbals. And they're like, man, like there's... Dudes on that other podcast, guys, like these cymbals just break all the time. That's why I don't play them. I'm like, no, because you play like a gorilla. That's why they break. I'm like, I've had the same. I have cymbals from the '60s and '40s, and they're still together because you don't beat them like a gorilla. You play them like you're supposed to. Good technique. Small sticks or big sticks. You don't use a thing massive. You're gonna I watched, tear them up, um, you dingus. I watched Adventure Drums the other day. Love went, him. went back to uh, some of his old videos where he was talking about hitting the cymbals too hard. With dirt. Where, where he talks about, what does he call him? He he purposely messes his name up. Travis Barcher, I think is what oh, he calls nice. him. He's like, and he's talking, and he's talking about cymbals up really high and flat and smacking them too hard. And he's like, you know, blah, 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 Travis Barcher. And he's like, 
you know, obviously no offense. All right, well, maybe a little more offense. <laughs> I was like, yes. But that's a good, because uh, he talks about um, guys that do that and then him going to see, like, a band along that lines, Bullet for My Valentine or something like that, and remarking that the drummer, like, never did more than this. Not yeah this, barely moving his wrist, still loud as all get out, never having to break his cymbals, but just, you know. Proper, again, like you said, proper technique. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that I remember, nineteen ninety whatever, for Christmas getting a pair of a head sticks, and I thought I was just the coolest kid in town. Like, look at these; these are basically Back to the Future for drumsticks. And now you couldn't pay me with a full endorsement to play those things. We'll give you all the bags you ever want. No. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I really can't. No matter how cool that. That OGO bag is you guys have. Partnered. I know, right? <laughs> you have partnered with them. I still couldn't do it. I'm like, I'll just flat out buy the bag because I love it. I love mine. I'll buy the bag. You keep your sticks. That's keep, fine. Keep your <laughs> keep your wizard wands away from me. Your, um, your metal. What are they are suggesting there in the comments? Now you can go back and hit any of those ones we skipped over. Um, really didn't skip over anything. Um, Richie just said I should need. I need to try the Keith Carlock stick. Love it the is tip length and the regal. Tip, regal tip style lacquer. Um, Richie <laughs> goes, uh, happy to see a head sticks losing their popularity. Good. <laughs> it continues. Also, the anomaly of the maroon Dave Weckl stick that he doesn't use anymore, that they still sell for some reason. I never that understood straight that. straight up marketing. Yeah. That is, that is like, I can't think of another like instance in consumerism where they're literally, that's a name. That is all that is. He, like you said, he doesn't play that stick anymore. He plays the black ones or the natural ones. Yeah, nobody cares about that model. Yeah. Um, and I would imagine a lot of people are like us. Well, they don't like anything on the stick anyway. It's just because it says his name on it. Yeah. And then you can stock it in the store, and the person that doesn't know enough would just buy them because it looks cool. Yeah. And it's got oh, it's got Dave Welkle on it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna play like Dave Welkle, right? When I use these sticks, that's the thought process. So they're probably slinging to this day still tons of those sticks, and like you said. That's not even the model that he uses. Yeah. <laughs> and here he goes. Dislikes the Ricky Rocket Bottle Rocket 6 that are some sort of pointless. Are those the ones that have the writ like they're like a um, like a, a Huira? I've never seen those six. They probably are because I've. No, they're not. That I'm sorry. That is the. And it might not even be this way anymore. You're, that was like the Johnny Rap. Johnny, Johnny Rap sticks. Oh, my yeah, cause Lord. Because he, he would do that thing on his uh, snare drum because he's a big. Uh, electronics on the guy. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to get those sticks just to see what it was like because I like that thing. Here's how lame I am. I went through and took one of the old saws and the, the yeah, back yeah. shed and I went through and cut grooves in one of mine there you go. to try to do it. It did not work. Of course not. But, at but least I was, it's fun to do. Yeah, I was like chick, 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 chick. <laughs> I was like, I didn't have sandpaper or anything. I didn't know what to do. I'm 14, 15. Yeah, really. I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna just cut into it and be like and I was, I went Ch -ch 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 -ch, and it just stuck and I was like, This isn't good. And so I went to play with my band afterwards. I was like, oh, I'm gonna try this out. Doom doom cut do -do -doom, doom done. <laughs> like, you have an extra one? I don't. <laughs> but yeah, so that was the the Johnny Rap. What was the Ricky Rocket? I have no idea because I've have Was that Richie that was saying yeah, that? Was, was, Richie, if you're still here, elaborate for us if you're still in the chat, uh, for the Ricky Rocket stick. And then he says, also, the old Vic grip used to give me instant blisters. The only guy I see now that uses those Vic grips is Gavin Harrison. And he's the only one I see uses those painted, gripped. Yeah. I hate those so much. It's like just, I don't know what to tell him. It's like either try that, like that tack stuff that other guys use. Yeah. It's like because to I had one of my students. He had um, the vid grip sticks that he would use because his hands or whatever. And then by like the fourth lesson, his sticks no longer. I was like, "Oh, you swapped your sticks? No, they just the coating rubbed off." I was like, "You've had them for four weeks and it's rubbed off already." I'm like, "That is whack." Yeah, but you basically get two pair of sticks at that rate. You get yeah. the vid grips and then you get to play with some regular ones. I'm sure that's not how they intend it. But. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, if you only get. Maybe a month without a pair of sticks. I'm like, you need to rethink it because I've had 
an old pair of Harvey Masons still lying around that I've had since Pinkston's was around. Yeah. When this was when I was in high school. This is like yeah, almost to hold on this to is some a, sticks. I'm approaching 10 years since I graduated high school. Jesus. Wow. Christ. I'm getting old. Shut up. Don't tell me about old. <laughs> tell me about anything old. You don't need a nap before you take a gig. Ah, uh, sometimes. Also, the yeah, I thought he replied about what it was. Um, I have no clue what those those Ricky Rocket. Um, here's a comment that somehow didn't that didn't slip through. Um, although I find both the Erskine sticks very useful, ride stick being particularly nice. I don't like the ride stick that much. I prefer the the piccolo tip. I don't think the, I've ever played with. I like the ride stick. Yeah. Um, the ride stick to me is a mini version of the Carter. Yeah. I really like the Carter. The problem is, is I would tear that. I have two pair right here. But if I were to play with these, I would ruin them probably in a heartbeat. Let me find these. Um, here they are. Yeah. I mean, I love the way that little tip feels. It bounces so nice. I mean, aptly named the ride stick. Yeah. But I would tear. I would tear that tip off by the time we got to because like everything Proud about Mary because like the, you have an, an old one the newer ones got a little more heft to them yeah but I just the tip just doesn't feel I mean it feels good to play with the rod but anything else out of sight of that you can't play anything true and the piccolo has got the more like actual like round ball tip on yeah. it it's the same body but it's hickory now because these are I have messed super with that light. stick you're right yeah um. But uh, but it, it's like you said, it is a great stick. I'm totally with you on that. I'm just gonna keep my little bag open as we as we go through. He goes. Uh, Bader made the stick. It had an inner dip in the lower part of the stick, and both sides of the handle were raised like a sword. Harder described, a pick would be better. I'll have to look it up. But yeah, yeah I, Ricky I, I, I kind of get. At least I get the indent part. The rest of the sword looking part, I don't really get. And we have all of our devices devoted to running the stream, so I can't. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to take my old iPad. Noonan said he's gotten really good about fixing the screens for inexpensive. I'm going to let him fix it. And hopefully I can devote that iPad to you just for the chat. And then we'll actually have something we can look up pictures live. Yeah. Um, so um, any more before we continue with our list um, of do's and don'ts for drumsticks? See. That's it so far. Okay. Um, here's another weird one. And I, and I, I don't want to say that it's bad in that it's bad. It's just bad because I'm sure it's a very specific use stick. This is the Vic Firth American Custom SD5 Echo. And you probably can't tell. Um, maybe Jarrett can put it in front of his camera. It has the like most aggressive taper from the butt of the stick all the way down to a super tiny ball tip. But like you can see, like now we're about where his nose is. That is some aggressive tapering. It basically looks like a bowling pin. Yeah. Now you're better about this stuff than I do. Is that what is that basically uh, like? Probably an orchestral stick. I would definitely say it's probably supposed to be for an orchestral. Uh, but most of the orchestral sticks, the way they they are made now, um, at least the the new ones that Vic Firth's been doing, you have a um, a flat butt. It's pretty thick. Almost like marching wise, all the way down, mm -hmm. and then they have this really gnarly tip to where you get up to the you get up to like the shoulder of the stick. Let me put that over there. So like you get up to the shoulder, and it's still fat, but then it stops, and then it goes um, convex to the actual this part to a really small bead. Mm -hmm. So you have ultimate like weight and control for super. Yeah. Precise. You have the small tip for articulation. Now, for these, I have no idea. Is Charlie here? Did he, did he, has he weighed in on the chat? Do we even know if he's here? Charlie, I hope you're still here because this is when we need you. Yeah, if you're here, Charlie, look up the SD5. Yeah, SD5 Echo because I feel like he, cause he does way more of that stuff than I have ever done. And I remember I, just and I know buying it because I thought it was a weird-looking stick. Yeah. And it really does... Like, it feels like a bowling pin. That's how aggressive the taper is. And then I played them one time and was instantly like, no, this is not for drum set. Uh, so this is probably an actual, probably more of an orchestral multi-percussion stick than anything. Like, because it's so thin, the bounce is like, it almost feels uncontrolled. Like, I yeah. mean, I know it's hard to think of like uncontrollable bounce, but it's really, it's a funky stick. Um, I'm glad I have them because it's a weird stick just to show off, but... 
yeah, that was that was a weird one. But like I said, I don't think it's weird or bad for any other reason that this probably has a very specific usage. Yeah. Not just because I didn't know what the heck I was picking. Yeah, Charlie, if you're still, I need you to, to comment on that because I was watching your uh, your that Broadway gig, your video you latest one did, and I kept eyeing your sticks and seeing what you're using for your, your timpani and everything. I really enjoyed that, by the way. Um, is anybody else weighing in before we move on to the next one? Uh, Richie says, also remember the rubber balls they used to they used to stuff in the end of Zildjian sticks? Oh, at the at the butt? Oh, those were called anti-vibe. I had those, and I don't know if it worked. I couldn't tell you. Not that I've ever, to be honest with you, I, 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 know, I know that's where my uh, technique is good enough. I've never hit something and had the baseball effect where it hurt my hand. So I never got the anti-vibe thing. And like I said, when I played them, they just felt lighter at the back end because yeah. they hollowed it out and put some foam up in there or rubber, whatever it was. Um, so I don't know if it worked. The one that I will mention on the opposite end of that, the one I absolutely hated, was those Vic Firth, uh, what were they called, where they put a piece of metal in the bottom to weight them. I've never got to play. I remember Vic Firth had the bullet tips that were actual no, no, metal no. tips. I remember These those, were never... the same thing as the anti-vibe. They would hollow out the bottom like a little like a little tube, but they put pieces of metal to weight the back end, which I guess maybe it was the precursor to uh, Promark's Perfect Balance. Yeah. Either Rebound or what's the other one called? Balance. Uh, it's either Balance or Forward. Yeah. Um, so maybe it was the precursor. This was years ago. Johnny Hosey Jr. used to buy those by this by the brick, and I can't remember what stupid name they had, but they literally had like it felt like a lead weight in the back of the stick. So I guess if you were a, you know, you don't choke up on the stick a lot, maybe yeah. it worked well, um, but I just thought it was a waste, and yeah, I really felt bad when you got done with the stick because if you know, it's obviously if you can figure out some weird way to recycle drumsticks when you're done with them, that's yeah. a good thing. Um, but this felt like it was just like useless, like to recycle them, they'd have to get the metal back out of the stick. And, yeah. you know, most people don't even do that anyway. Or they just throw their sticks like I do in a drawer. Um, so that was kind of one that I thought was was dumb. And then obviously 10 or 15 years later, now Promark has and really Vic Firth does have the same thing where they have a, it, the, the, the balanced feel between forward and back on the sticks. Yeah, I know Dr. Wooten's signature stick that he has. Um, he has a metal band on the butt of his. Yeah. And that's to help you get more umph when you do the back sticking. And so that, that makes that, sense. Yeah, that, yeah. But that's again, simple fix to a simple problem. Don't try to, you know, yeah, we're not rewriting the book. Like you said, here. the bullet tips, like, yeah, really? You want metal tips? How bright do you need your symbols to cut? And how like, long do you not want your drum heads to last? Yeah. Or, and I, w I wouldn't, not even drum heads. I'd be afraid to hit a symbol of, of worth. Yeah, with a metal tipped drumstick. That's because uh, I used to see them in the in the in the modern drummer books that I got from Pat, <laughs> and I got a couple of the newer ones he just gave me as they came in, and I was like, this cannot be good for anything you're playing with. No, I wanted to get a pair just to have them, just to see what it sounded like. Yeah, I was like, but I would never use these. Like this is probably awful. But we did have an idea using them for. Uh, for indoor or whatever they use on like different like metallic stuff for indoor but we never because those yeah. are expensive we ended up just using uh triangle beaters yeah. instead yeah yeah Duh. It's, it's still metal i <gasps> think that's phil that's phil the door is unlocked phil come on in um is it unlocked uh oh go hunt him down so i think we are in the midst of a live special guest that has dropped by. If it's who I'm thinking of, it is our good buddy, Phil Lonfont, who was teaching lessons and decided to go ahead and stop by. I tricked him into a live stream. So he's going to stumble right in, and then we can continue our conversation about drums. Is it Phil? Yeah, it's Phil. It's Phil. Go hey, do what you got to do. We're already, whatever, an hour and something in, so just uh, take your time. So, yeah, we got another opinion in for this uh this conversation but the one i was going to bring up next is hold it up to your camera please this is the i don't even remember what it was does it say on there uh, broomsticks the broomsticks by whoever who promark. cares promark um obviously all these are kind of rooted in the brush 
Um, and most guys that like me that don't play jazz or never trained on a brush, a brush is pretty foreign to me. Like, I don't feel comfortable using brushes. Um, there's one pair that I have that are some regal tips that have um, nylon floppy brushes, which basically means it's like that. So I like those, and I don't use them in a brush technique. I just use them for lower volume. But this is one that I had for a while that I thought was so stupid. I love those. Well, but I, I let me preface it. Back. I thought it was stupid only because it hadn't been perfected yet. Yeah. This was like one of the first versions of like, I want to sound super hip and super textured, man. What do I, this would be what it was. Now, where I think they perfected that idea and what is super popular right now is all those Vic Firsts that have come out recently. Those remixes are what they're called. Yeah, the remixes. Um, that is like the updated, perfect version of that. Um, come on in, man. Sit down and grab a seat and grab the microphone, and you can join in on this uh, drumstick discussion. Yeah, talking about sticks, man. Uh, so y'all have never seen him before. This is our bud, uh, bud Guddy. This is our good buddy. Mr. Phil Lonfont, like the um, original trio is what you're looking at right here. Yeah. Um, this is the original trio of guys that hung out um, before we did the live streams and would come over here all the time. Phil is actually in that drummer hangout video that we've talked about before. So, um, and like I said, he lives five minutes away from me. So I'm going to start calling you all the time now because it's good to have the other opinion in the room. Yeah, um, absolutely, man. And we're t we're sitting here talking about <laughs> terrible drumsticks. And moving around if you need to. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 no. yeah. Don't be scared. Yeah, get it, get it comfortable, and this you is totally get comfortable. You know? I know, right? I, tricked, <laughs> I, I totally I tricked you into. Coming over to I, oh, just, I, just move it around. Now get it. Make sure you're like get get on it. Don't be scared to, of it. Don't be afraid. To, to put your mouth on it. You can touch yeah. it. Yeah. You're you know, good. It, yeah. So yeah, like I said, yeah, I cool. told him like, hey man, when you get out of your uh, lessons, come on down and you can just sit here and and jaw with us while we talk about stupid drumstick gimmicks. Stupid drumstick gimmicks, man. Uh, we were talking about these. I oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, Splinters I, flying everywhere. Yeah, well, I like those for like. You need a little, like. I used to play like coffee fusion all the time. Right. I use a lot of like hot rods, and I always wanted a pair of those, but. My ten buck cut of coffee fusion didn't let me afford <laughs> to uh, to use those at all. I got tired of spending twenty five bucks a pop on die rods, though, man. Uh, there's there's like a cheap Amazon version you can get there, like ten bucks a piece. Oh, there you go. Yeah, and you there just hit them with some extra electrical tape, and they work just the same. <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. And like like you said, if you need some hot rods and you don't want to pay the pro mark price, go on Amazon and look for that, and just try to find the uh, the off brand one. I used some. to make my own. Did you? Yeah, I would go to <laughs> Walmart. Just get dowel rods. Yeah, I know. I would go to Walmart and get skewers. Yeah, there you go. And I would, I would take the pointed ends and put them down. <laughs> and I would no, it's just sounds, it sounds lame, but no, I'd take the pointed ends, I'd put it down, and then I'd get duct tape and just wrap the bottom together, and then I'd take one of my mom's like hair ties. Like yeah, I have, there you go. Like I have now, <laughs> and I would just pull the top and just adjust it to get like the the openness. I mean, they, they work. They're cheap. It cost me like six bucks, and I made... Uh, 15 uh, years ago, that would have been a million dollar idea. Made yeah, a really. crap ton. <laughs> yeah. Had a crap ton of those. Well, what stick are you currently using? Oh, uh, right now... um you know, I tried to go with the uh, the Weckl signature, the uh, the second edition, those orange. -er we were just talking yeah. about yeah. the the, yeah. the the one that everybody uses and the one that nobody uses. Exactly, the, the brownish red one. Is yeah, the, one the, they the maroon me instead. Yeah. Oh God. And it it, it it it's terrible on my wrist because that paint that they cut it with, like if your hand just gets a tiny bit sweaty, it's sliding and you're fighting to, you know, resecure your fulcrum. And it just really, it's terrible, man. Well, that's what I, we were I talking about, like uh, drumsticks that we really like. JoJo Mayer model, Buddy Rich model, the uh, Steve Gadd, the Weckl, but we hate the all of them. Cool. But we hate all of them because they have paint on them. Yeah, exactly. You know, and some you of the best models grip. you can't use because yeah. they're, you know. Right. Uh, I took a piece of sandpaper. <laughs> <laughs> to the Weckles because I love the taper I love the length I it's love a good the stick pick. it's yeah, a good feeling it's great. stick it feels great yeah it, it's almost comparable to um, I used to really love the the Promark uh, the Shira Oak the, the Ed Shaughnessy yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah ones man and they, they just felt great man it was a lot of weight enough weight to work with you know with rebound you could play really quietly but still have good control I'm with you on that um, and like I said it, it's like so many are ruined because we actually found out that the GAD yeah. comes in a natural. 
Really? Like they make. I've never seen it. I haven't either. Have either. I, yeah. Look, <laughs> yeah. And so our our legacy member, our good friend now, uh, Charlie Smith, who lives in the UK, he's like, they came out three or four years ago. And we're like, what? Where have we been? Which I would play yeah, that. I'd like, try. I would definitely play that because, Absolutely. Um, you know, so many have been ruined. But so that's what you're playing right now is the Weckle. Yeah. Well, like, I'm trying. I'm going back and forth. Um, I'm, I'm a simple guy. You know, I just like 5A. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I experimented with the, the pro mark, the uh, you know the balanced rebound, yeah, yeah, yeah. The forward yeah. things. You know, um, I found the forwards to be pretty good warm up sticks. You know, because they are weighted a little yeah. forward. You know, I mean, it's to me, it's nothing really that noticeable. Um, a lot of guys no. swear by it, but I mean, like where you grip the stick, a lot of players now are gripping it like way back. Yeah, you know, they're choking way back. So I can see him getting that extra power. And that articulation, you know, from them, but I don't know. It, you know, after a while, it just felt like a regular stick. Because I haven't got <laughs> to play around with those new Pro Marks. The newest one I got, I, I have of those is just. I think it's just the r- standard five A. It might be the rebound. I have in my truck. I'll pull them out when we get done. Because I have those. Because I got three sets of those, and I got three sets of the seven forty sevens, the green model. Yeah, yeah. When mm. I had a cover for you, because I had no clue. Because I always just use small jazz sticks. I'm like, I'm playing in Boomtown. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what, I'm like, I don't know what I need. So I got, I got three pairs of those, and then three pairs of the bigger ones. Because I'm like, I'm playing Boomtown tonight, and then I'm playing freaking uh, some place of Baton Rouge the next night. I don't know what this place is gonna be like. And like, I know the juke joint's fine. I could use whatever for the juke joint. Like for those two nights, I'm like I don't know what sticks I need to use. How loud it's gonna be. Are they going to be fully mic'd? Is like mic going to tell me to shut up? Is Duna going to be like, <laughs> like towering over me? Like, why are you so loud? You know, or why are you so quiet? Like, hit harder. Like, I didn't know what to do. So I was like, I just got two pairs. So two different types. Like, really thick, but they're really light. And then kind of heavy, but they're small. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And so I just kind of came prepared. And I only used the, the five A's and no one said anything. I was like, all right, cool. I'm fine. Everything's Gucci. Yeah. No, you can't go wrong with a 5A. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> what he uses. Uh, we already discussed our feelings on 5As a little bit earlier. Um, but are, are they uh, weighing any more there on the chat um, since we last checked in? So let's see. Richie said, also, if you like the jazz sticks, the Ed Soft Signature Innovative Percussion Sticks are great. I never liked Innovative Percussion Sticks. They always broke super quick. Oh, they always just felt yeah, weird. Cool. I think it's more of a marching thing. Well, I used to be, I used a lot of their marching sticks because uh, Dr. Baker uh, is a educational endorser for them, and then we used a couple of them in high school. I forgot whose model it was for uh, marching. I can't remember. Were they the ones that came out with that? Uh, it was like a molded. You know what I mean? Like it, it kind of molded in where you were supposed to hold it. I think they did have one model that was like that, if I'm not mistaken. I know that we got a bunch of them to try out from uh, our percussion instructors able to like order like a little test batch for us to like figure out before we went through and bought like 50 pairs. Oh, mm-hmm. they did that to us all the time at Magnolia. They'd make us order the stuff. Like everybody used like System Blue and like the obvious stuff. Ralph yeah. Hardeman, System Blue. Uh, the the new kids got an MS one. Yeah, and then like very rarely or occasionally they want to try out all Silver Fox oh, the silver or Fox. all Innovative Percussion. So they would put it on us to order all this crap in, <laughs> and then they would get it in. And I remember specifically with Silver Fox, we got those Silver Fox tenor sticks in that have the plastic kind of flat hammer-looking bead. Um, yeah, like the hammerhead. Yeah. Kinda, almost like halos. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, nobody liked them. And we were stuck with them because Harrison Central High School wanted to try out Silver Fox. And it's like, why don't you just use a Ralph Hardeman like everybody else? Or <laughs> use like the System Cooper Blue or whatever, yeah, you know. Yeah, are solid sticks. Yeah, it was awesome, man. Um, so they, it seemed expensive. like that happened to us a lot. Um, but I do have three or four pair of innervated percussion, like 5As. And no offense, Richie, they kind of feel like cheap drumsticks to me. Yeah, I never liked them. I never was. Not... It feels like a, I mean, it's just a typical model. It's not like, like he's saying, like the Ed So for some signature model. It just feels like a cheap drumstick. Now, the ones that we had for marching are innovative percussion ones um, through Dr. Baker. I like the ones he got for us because those were cool. So, like, when it came down, so you had the, the whole stick came down, and when you got down to the shoulder, everything was nice and neat. But instead of it just going straight into the bead, it came out and then cut in a little bit, and then the bead came out. Ah, and, yeah, I remember those. And, it, and it those felt really good, and they sounded good on our drums. I mean, even though you're playing for Micah countertops, I mean, 
the B does matter a little bit on the fill because it is such like a fill knows it's such a high tension, you know. Even absolutely, you probably added more weight to it. Yeah, you got, you got a little bit more um. Find the B. Okay, a more um. Rapid little. fire question for the two marching guys. Favorite marching stick? Uh, easy, Ralph Hardman's. All right, Cooperman. Okay. That's two. I mean, that's two. Very. I still have. I take mine back. I take. I take mine back. No, you can't. I'm sorry. I, I, I forgot all about them. Uh, Vic Firth, Colin McNutt sticks. Ooh. 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 See. Ooh. Ooh. ooh exactly. That, that's way after my time. Those are. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But sorry. Yeah, uh, strides and marching sticks. Yeah. <laughs> and for some reason, I don't know why. Because now all they do is get used as practice sticks for on the pad. I ordered like everything you could think of when I was at Magnolia. No reason. I can't tell you why. There's <laughs> I've got Scojos, I've got Hardemans, I've got MS ones, MS twos, I've got MS fours were nice. Um the weird tenor stick by Jeff Queen. Or no, that was his I got the Jeff Queen solo stick. Yep. Somebody's Jeff weird tenor stick. So who's like a famous tenor player? Uh, probably Jeff Queen. He had multiple models. Yeah. yeah. Um he, and I don't know why. And now wherever the bag is. <laughs> it's just full, and the, and I don't need them because I just use them on the practice pad. MS ones, Lord, DC twelve, <laughs> DC twelve indoor. Like I don't even know why you have halos to begin with. <laughs> He's got most of the stuff in there. Yeah, like, like why do you have Core a Master <laughs> MT one AS? Yeah, why do you have halos? Sticks? That's if somebody breaks in the house. <laughs> <laughs> when you bring your tenors out, you know. I mean, it's <laughs> well, I did. I did have that. I guess that's probably why I did it because for some reason Ray Hanser called me right after the hurricane. Harrison Central. All their drums got ruined during the hurricane, so they were getting all this brand new stuff. They literally took their entire line of drums and threw them out by the road. Really? So I got, for nothing, a bass drum, a set of tenors, and a marching snare. And I think I ordered all that because I would just go out into the backyard and <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of a neighborhood with a 26-inch bass drum going, go, 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 go. <laughs> the next day, got the tenors out. <laughs> Stevie marching up and down the street. You gotta get your butterfly smooth, man. And now, <laughs> hey, now I'll, I'll use this one pair when I practice on the practice pad. So a complete way. So if anybody needs any pr uh, marching sticks, I definitely got you covered. And I definitely have the ahead marching sticks if somebody wants those for free. Good, good job. I love the transition. More warming up with some marching sticks and then pick up some like five A's. Or That's what I do. <laughs> I warm up with MS ones and then I come over here and it's just like ah. <laughs> It's perfect. <laughs> and then uh, Richie said, "Broken drumstick, juke joint, bonfire." I'm there. And then Doc. Oh, that's Momo, right. Doc Momo seconded it. Um, Cosmo Kramer said, "We could just go back to the Pro Mark rock knocker days with no tips, just double butt ends, real subtle." I have one right here, <laughs> like a thick timbali stick. This was about the a timbali <laughs> stick. And I think I only kept this for that very reason. If I ever wanted to smack a cowbell or something <laughs> wow. like that. You know, but yeah, literally just double butted. I think it, I, and I literally, I think that came with, do you remember that cheap set of timbales that used to sit in the corner years ago? They were basically a lamp stand. Were they full size? Yeah, they were yeah. full. I think that came with those timbales. And I've only ever kept it, not that I'm ever going to play a cowbell when I play, but if I do, it'll be like, yeah, be perfect for <laughs> it. Not that I'm going to take the extra time to mount a cowbell and drag all that stuff around or have another drunk dude in the bar go, more cowbell. You don't travel with a cowbell? Why don't you travel with a cowbell? Every time. Same with your way. style, I'm surprised you don't use a cowbell. Like I don't like it. I don't like it. Everything I've ever... I've, and you've been in that room. Everything you could ever want yeah, from LP or there. Pearl is in <laughs> yeah. there. And I've mounted every single one of those. And th they get hit like a couple of times. And I'm like, nah, I don't need it. Yeah. I'd, I'd, have, I'd have a field day with half those uh, tambourines. Not tambourine. Not a tambourine. A tambourine. I'm sorry. I, was, yes. I was always goof that up. It was so close. Those are sweet. All your panderos. Panderos. The panderos. Oh, I remember he had a like a small one. I think he had mounted on the bass drum. At uh, where were you playing? Um, we had the juke that one night, and we put the yeah, bass microphone the underneath it. Another place in downtown Gulfport. Oh, I don't even uh, remember the, now. The, the 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 quarter, and you had it set up, and I sat in once, and I think I, I hit it too hard, and I kind of split the head a little bit. Oh, I don't, <laughs> even, I don't even I don't even remember that. I was like, wow, that's cool. Oh, oh, ooh, ooh. Hey. And then now oh, we've got <laughs> it was about that big. Yeah, I know big. what you're talking about, and it you. I didn't know that you did that, but yeah, it is it is kind of split. Yeah, and it was the, it was no fault of yours. It was the mount that they made. It for was it. at a weird angle, and yeah, the mount the mount grabs really hard, and if you just it hit too it too stable. hard, it just yeah. yeah, it's it wasn't good. 
Um, so yeah, that was uh, but yeah, the the pan the pan the arrows are fun. I need to bring that back out. That's always with the bass drum mic underneath. Yeah. put it on left oh, side. Oh, it's fun. That's super fun. It's a um, subwoofer with jingles. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> um, God, Richie says love the beautiful boy number three, Phil. It's whenever you walked in. <laughs> That's right. Um, he said stock. Sticks for gigs. The Los Angeles Five A's is my go-to. Vic for the Five A's is a close second. I forgot all about the Los Angeles Five A's. I used those for a while too when I was in high school. Yeah, they're good. I mean, that's I could find a stick in each brand if I had to. It doesn't really matter. Vic Firth Pro Mark or, or Vader. I could find something in each one of those brands. Um, but I, I I I got to play with a couple of those Los Angeles ones, and they, you know, not not too many sticks I think I've ever hated. Like, absolutely hated. Um, I have, it's not in here, the Aaron Spears stick. Have you ever seen that? Mm-hmm. I'll have to pull it out when we get done. It is the, we. it's almost, it's almost like the double butt. That's not the double butt. But if this was double butted, like, the indent, what will be called the shoulder, is so minimal, it basically looks like that. Oh, And God. it ruins drums. Like, drums. <laughs> it just dents, it just dents drum heads. That's all it does. And I, he's a hard hitter, so I guess yeah. that's why. But that was one of the few ones that I just couldn't stand. I, couldn't. I could not stand the boleros. Really? Yeah, I never had the boleros. I I got forced to use them uh, for jazz band uh, for a time because like sticks you're using don't have enough articulation. Got to get the boleros, man. Uh, even though Chris Morgan sounds nothing like that. Yeah, uh, that's just me. That's just my impersonation. Did of you have to change your grip when you used them? Did you have to choke up a little bit more? Or? Yeah, because they're like they're they're so <laughs> thick and awkward. Because um, Chris was like, "Gotta make sure you have something you know more appropriate for jazz." And I'm like, "Ah, these don't really feel that good." But I had I used them anyway um, until I found the magic that was the ride stick. Yeah, ah. and that's whenever Pat I was like, "Pat, uh, I need sticks for a jazz band." He's like, "I got you covered, Jared. Use these instead." And then uh, Mr. Morgan was like. Okay, that's way better than those boleros. Just use those from now on. And he kept the he kept those boleros as backups, um, for if he ever broke someone. I think he kept those for God knows how many years. It's a good stick. I mean, that's like I said, I still have multiple pairs in my bag, and probably will always do just in case there's like a super low volume gig. Those are those are perfect for that. Yeah, I got a little a little upset whenever um, I had to sit in for those uh, Grateful Dead boys, and uh, Brandon's like, "Play quieter, play quieter." I'm like, "These guys are." Like you're louder than I am. You get you gave me the regal tips. I couldn't even hear myself play. I'm just going. Those regal, regal tips have been worn to perfection. I'm like, they are fine. Whittled. They have been whittled, dude. They really have. And I I I keep them rubber banded together so nobody can actually accidentally pull one out. So it's like if you need a jazz stick, or it's like no, you really got to be quiet. They're perfect because they have like it looks like I've taken sandpaper to the shoulder and just made a flat line from the bead. All the way down, like it, they're they felt good. Yeah, I was a little scared. He's like, "Don't mess these up." I'm like, D- "Okay, don't break them." <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing, like what he said. You know, uh, there's no stick that has really that I've actually ever really hated. It's the wear and tear that you put on it that really kind of yeah seals the deal for me. You know, like the longer it'll last, eh, usually I'll gravitate more towards something that lasts longer. You know, um, oh yeah, the fire grains are great, man. Yeah, we're they talking about last. those earlier. We were yeah. talking about those earlier. Um, I, I just wish. That's what we were saying, like, because I'm not a big fan of just a standard 5A. I know you are. So I was, I, was, I wish somebody would come out with a signature stick in whatever the dimensions, but at the end fire say, grain. fire grain it. Because right. that would be, like, I could think of 100 sticks that I love the way they're shaped or weighted or feel, but I tear them up too quick. Mm-hmm. But if you fire grained it, you'd get a little bit more life out of it. Absolutely. Like, Len- Larnell Lewis doesn't have a signature stick. What does I he don't play? think yet, but he plays fire. Grain, he plays the fire grain five six. A rebounds, yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay, yep. huh? That's what he plays. And I somebody I want to say somebody came out with a signature stick the other day, and I looked at or I saw it, and I was thinking like, well, they just put your name on a five A. That's what it looked like. Which I imagine is probably like the case a lot of times. You know, you have to be a I would imagine a big name for them to take the time really to design. Really meticulous too. You know, to really be to know the taper. Like I. I want this side, you know, it's yeah. like if someone really came up to you and was like, design your perfect stick. I'd be like, give me the Erskine stick with the Peter Jordan bead and we'll start from there. If that sucks, 
we'll just go. Yeah, from all there. I could really do was hand you three or four sticks I really like exactly. and go. And like, can you take all of these? Yeah. yeah, like yeah. or the the butt of this with the tip of this with the taper of this. Right. Because I can always find something I don't no like. Paint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Good God. I want I want a brick of JoJo Mayers, a brick of Buddy Riches, and a brick of Weckles in natural finish. <laughs> natural just finish. don't paint them, please. So, all right. Any more in the comments? Uh. We got Dakota Berkowitz saying, I can't wait for those Dakota Berkowitz signature bass drum mallets. Because Dakota Berkowitz is the fastest double bass drum player on the coast for sure. Oh, I bet. <laughs> you were there. And it's been, yeah, it's been like six could, months since then, though. Yeah, those it's, are, those it's, are your pedals we used. Yeah. My speed's probably grown exponentially since then. <laughs> and I've ne- and I've and the thing is I've never seen someone with a case for their pedals before. The last person I saw before you was a friend of mine, Austin Huff, who I marched with in high school. That's just what he got, his little pro eliminators. But I'm like, he had a hard case with all like the different cams and stuff. He had the fancy ones. I've never seen anyone like just a DW double pedal and a little soft side bell. I'm like, look at Phil over here. So fancy. He got a bag for his pedals. What do I do? Open up the bag, throw mine in there, and close it up. Oh, yeah. We're done. I'm the meanest I, to my bass drum I pedal. I abuse my 5,000. I 5, could care 000. less about my bass drum pedal. It it, it it catches the most like, yeah, I don't care. Throw it, lean it, <laughs> set stuff on it. It doesn't matter. I probably should take care more care of my bass drum pedals, but I don't. I just throw it in. I take the beater off and put it in my stick bag. I picked it up from you because I used to just take it off and just throw it in there with everything <laughs> else. I'd have to dig under flaps to find my beater. Well, most pedals don't come with cases with designated areas for everything. Like the 9,000 that I got six months ago whatever you know like the hard case has it's molded for like every little piece to snap into you know so it's like back in the day when really i was a kid easy. and i thought the pinnacle of bass All drum pedals were. was the iron cobra oh, yeah. and then if you got the double iron cobra with that huge <laughs> plastic case that they you know cause the, the iron cobras all come in that plastic yeah can- I, don't, I don't think it, it didn't like overlap it was like them side by side yeah yeah it was it? huge it was, <laughs> it was like that big and it's like you know i'd be I'm like 17 i see like a, a you know, a pro drummer from around here. I'm like, wow, he must really know what he's doing because he's got that big old case. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's going to be awesome. Now going, <laughs> never. I would never. I would never <laughs> carry anything like that around. That is too much weight. That is too much space being taken up by some stupid foot case. Throw it in the bag. Scratch it up. I don't <laughs> care. I, I, what I used to do whenever I played devil bass, uh, I would just keep everything connected, and I would just grab it by the cross. By the linkage? By just... the by, <laughs> by the link. Dangle, dangle, dangle. And I would literally just take it, and then th- and this is how I don't have a, a hardware bag yet. I would just put it in the back of my truck. Nice. And, that, and then I'd put the other stuff, like, <laughs> next to it. Like, the farthest I'd get to it, feel like I would take, like, a strap and, like, bow tie everything together so it wouldn't roll in the back. <laughs> or, or, to have, uh, or I'd even go this far. I wouldn't even collapse the, the bases. I would just take them out of my room. <laughs> and then put them in the back so they wouldn't roll in the back. And I would just, like, sandwich stuff between my stands. <laughs> that, abuse. It was it was abuse. I won't even have a stick bag at one point. I would just take them and then, like, I'd take a rubber band and put them around my sticks. And I'd, like, that would be my – and I'd put them on top of the bass drum. Remember what, like, my old 5A is, like, look at me. I'm cool. And then I got a stick bag for Christmas. Like, this is dope with the plastic hooks that I broke. And then I had to tie the shoestring bits around the actual tension rod. <laughs> it took me a long, it took me a long time to figure out how to use my stuff, and then once I did, I have not looked back on those the dark ages. When you got of, all professional cases, did you feel like you made it? That <laughs> took so long, but God, like, I'm you're professional feeling, now because I just I could not justify spending the you're money. Like here and it's beautiful cases. Yeah, for like <laughs> for getting like I was like cases. What's that? I get one for my snare drum. I was like, well, that, yeah, yeah, one yeah. for the snare. Yeah, absolutely. But like, but like the bass drum, no. Sat in the front seat. The toms put a t-shirt and stacked them up. <laughs> put a seatbelt around it so it wouldn't slosh around in the back if I had to use mom's car. <laughs> but if I took my truck, everything just got put in the bed. <laughs> they would bake. I'd. I'd, this is how bad it was. I used to tune my drums up before I went to a, a gig. So the, in the back, so of the in the truck, back <laughs> they would get hot, detail. and then they'd detune to be, in the, be right, in the right the pitch. The exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to tune them back up halfway through, and that'd be it. Like, how do you get your drums to sound so good? It's nature, baby. <laughs> it's nature. It's nature. <laughs> Sonny D himself is, is vitamizing my drums right now. Vitamizing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but that goes to prove that you should never do that. <laughs> you shouldn't. And Richie, yeah. if he's still here, can attest because I'm the one that played that joke on Richie. 
all those years, that red pearl that I used to take to the juke joint. Mm-hmm. The strata? Yeah. yeah. Um, all those years, never put it in a bag. Never, And I would leave it in the car. And everybody for all those years said, you know, you really shouldn't leave your drums in the car like that. I'm like, oh, you don't know what you're talking yeah, your about. Your rap started coming off. Like, well, not that, but drum. that's the other <laughs> terrible part, which I can <laughs> live with that. But I remember after it was, it had to be in the summer because the temperature would have been fluctuating. I was on the way to the juke by myself in the Xterra, and I was driving and I heard, pow, while I was driving. I was like, oh my God, my tire just popped or something just broke. But I'm driving. I'm like, I don't feel anything in the the wheel. I'm not, you know, it's not shaking. I'm like, all right, whatever. I get to the juke joint. I'm like, I look around. Like the car looks fine. I'm like, well, I don't know what that. I must just hit something. Get everything out. Take the bass drum into the juke. I, you know, no bag, just raw bass drum. Set it on the thing, and then I see it. The no, the hoop popped under tension. Oh, so wow. that was what the popping noise was, and then it hit me. I was like, oh, this is perfect. Who's not here yet? Richie. He's not here yet. So everybody's everybody's been informed of what's going on and how to play it off. So we start the show like normal. I don't touch anything. I set the drum kit up, playing, playing a couple songs. Oh, there's Richie. Hey man, come on, come and sit, come and sit in. Richie sits down. <laughs> he plays his couple of songs. He uh, and he finishes that set. I bet so, he knew immediately. No, 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 no. <laughs> he finishes the set. And so I like, like with anybody, even though it's the end of the set, I walk up and like, okay, you know, set everything back to the way it was. And he's coming down and I go, I look down at the drum set. And I went, what did you do? And he's like, what? I'm like Richie. And I dude, I like probably overdid it. Cause I really made him feel bad. But like, I was just like, you broke my bass drum hoop. Rah! And he's like, I mean, I didn't rah, rah, rah. like played it off perfectly. And about the time I thought it was really getting to be too much, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm messing with you. And he's like, are you serious? I'm like, yes, I'm just messing with you. It broke in the car. I heard it pop. But the point being is, is like, do not do that. Don't leave your drums in the car without a bag. It even will break. Bags. Yeah, even yeah. in bags. It will break. Even on the most tired nights, I'm like, no. You walk back the out of the car. The drums at least have to get Yeah, in, the cymbals man. can, all the chords yeah. and everything stand there. You go back out of the car and you get that stuff inside because we are never, I'm not having a reference break or I'm not having... I'm not having something of worth break because I didn't take it back out of the car. Your kit looks beautiful. It's the first time I've seen it set up as a five piece. We were just just talking talking about about that. that. Really? (laughs) I'm a little late. I I don't think I've played a five piece in 10 years. And for some stupid reason last night, I was like, I grabbed the 12, throw it up there. I've been doing it recently, man. Change it up, you know, change the pattern, add that Tom in there. And all of a sudden you're like, Oh wait, this sounds a little different than my. I really stupid. like an eight and a ten up top, and then the four. Um, I saw down. something I like this eights. week. I saw something this week. It was dope, and I want to say it was a either an eighteen inch kick or a sixteen inch kick. Doesn't matter, but eight, ten, fourteen. Yeah, that's. that's I was like, great. oh, those are some cool sizes. Because I, I'm like you. I miss an eight. I love an eight, man. I can't num- number one to find an eight in the new color version of that. Would be one yeah, thing, but to find the old, that's the old, uh, what do they call it? Purple Craze 1? Yeah. Um, to find an 8 is almost impossible. I would settle for the newer version, which is just a slightly bit more red than, it's like, it's still purple, but it's like got a redder hue. Mm-hmm. I would be fine, but I wa- I would love an 8 for that kit. That I don't think I'll ever find one, um, but I would love to have an 8 for the kit. Um, I miss having an 8-inch Tom. You know, I was checking out new mounts for my kit, and... It, I was looking at the Opti mounts, the aluminum ones, like you have for the for the reference. But uh, what do you think about the other ones? Like oh, the the, uh, uh, the Vision one. Not the the, the other mounts. Um, you see how that's aluminum all the way around. The other ones, they're they're different. They're not aluminum. And they're pearl. Yeah, they're pearl. They're uh-huh. pearl Opti mounts. They're just oh, the black ones. Yeah, they're just heavier. They're just they're just steel. That's all it is. Yeah, they're just like that was to be lighter for the that's nicer way attractive. kit. That's attractive. I mean, that looks. Yeah, beautiful. yeah, that's the, that's to, that's to be lighter for the nicer kit. The standard ones, the black ones, they're just steel. They're no, just heavier. It. They just make the drum heavier. That's really it. No, but they no. work fine. I, th- that's what comes on all the masters, and I've had two masters kits in my life, and they sound fine. Right. Um, I I, I could care less which Optimout it is, but I like the Optimout system. Um, oh, they're that awesome, and man. that and Yamaha. We were talking about that last week. Yeah. The Yamaha Yes system is the other free floating mount I like. Mm. Um, never been a big fan of the the Gibraltar, the big 
the go around half the drum. Uh, that. The yeah, rims yeah. mount. PDP did the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, um, it hooks to four lugs. You and know. I think we were talking about it last week that both of us wouldn't care if it was drilled straight into the shell, like lug lug straight into the sh- or the mount straight into the shell. I could right, care yeah, less. I think we're all on the same page with that. Yeah, just yeah. drill. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me. As long as it's secure, I could care less. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but I mean, we're already like jumping off the rails here. Any more in the comments? <laughs> that's section? it. Oh, no, that's it. That's Good. It. Awesome. Um, well, that was a pretty, another like kind of natural topic popping up, yeah. which is what I'd like to happen more often instead of us like setting. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sure you guys have a syllabus here. Or something. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, but that's how we have done it in the past. Like we would pick a topic and this is the second week in a row, like in the first half of the show, the topic has just come up. Like naturally, which is why I like that a lot better. It's good to stay current. You know? Yeah, um, I don't mind like having a set topic when we bring like a guest in or something where we know like Hugh is vintage drums or yeah. Ray Hanser is. When's restor- that happening, by the way? I don't know. I, I just gotta call him. Um, we basically at least the, it feels like the 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 pulse right now is two episodes with us, one with a guest. Two episodes with us, one with a guest. Yeah, so technically, him. next week would be a guest. Uh, I just haven't awesome. even thought about who to call. Um, any one of y'all, you, Ray, Hugh, um, we already did Cedric. Uh, I'd like to get Pat, but, you know, he's so busy with work and the kid. That would be great. Uh, yeah, um, but he's got the kid, and I know Annie's an hour away, so it's not as easy for, like, you're five minutes down the road. You can just run over here when you're done with lessons and stop by. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll have, to, we'll have to figure that out, but we will uh, – if I decide this week on who that we're going to do, I'll make a post on Facebook that all of you will see. Um, so if we have no more comments in the comment section, we're going to go ahead and close out tonight. Jarrett, you need to say anything before we get out of here? Uh, no, but I'm good. Are we on regular schedule for next week? Regular schedule for next week, yes, Okay, sir. so next week, Thursday, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, as usual. And remember, if you want to hear the audio-only version of the podcast, you can find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Simply search Bearded Bearded Drums. Drums. If you want to send us a short video under 30 seconds or a photo, simply send it to all lowercase beardeddrums at gmail.com. And if you want to ask questions to Jarrett or talk about topics for the show, go to the Bearded Drums fan page at Facebook. Just simply search Bearded Bearded Drums. Drums. So... Thank you, Phil, for stopping by. I'm glad that you got to come by after your lessons were hey, done. Man, thanks for having me, man. Well, That's we're going to awesome. have you on more often because I know you're right around the corner. It's always good to have another opinion on the show. So that's going to wrap us up for this week. Because of the stupid update on my Streamlabs program, I'm not going to have the outro video. So it's just going to go blank, but I'll get everything fixed by the time we get on for next week. So for now, thank you, everybody, for tuning in this week. And we will see you on the next one. Jared, I'm sorry, I almost took it from you. You can go ahead and do the Yeah, and we'll see you on the next one. That's right, guys. Bye. Thank you so much. We'll see you later.